Welcome to the Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a Ko-Fi, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So, a massive shout of thanks and appreciation to Chris Wouters, Mr. Amish, Naughty Thumbnails, Mitch Kennedy, Rod, the name's Burley, Twad Wazzle, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, Flat Earth Travolta, J Mels24, Unimento, M, Iron26, Eric Troche, Endless, Goldie McKinnon, Retro Bill, Level Plane Poem, Canna Bear, Michael Khan, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Melby Styles, Harry Blade, Mobile Mac 777, Rob W, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. And now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. How you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. A bit better. How are you? Sound better. I had three days of doing, I think. So it should be a bit better. Yeah, I just put that in uh, Master B. You didn't read it? What? I told, I told John, what's the story? Where's Nathan? Let's go. I gave you a three day weekend. Oh, thank you, Neil. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you're feeling better. That sucks. When, when you're, when you got, I know what you had because I had that. It's like your whole head is like freaking clogged. And there's no such thing as a head cold. For years, I thought it was a head cold, but it's just you're sick, and that's the one of the symptoms. But you can really get foggy. I don't know what it was. I was just sick for a prolonged period, as was everyone else here. But my kids are still coughing. I noticed that all three of them, they still got like a, like a lingering cough. Yeah, same here. Other than that, everything's great. Did I tell you about my oldest son's job? No. Yeah, he's been working. He finally got um got a call back in like this uh, like a Petco, you know, PetSmart. You ever heard of them? Yeah, yeah. They're in the States. It's like, all right. So it's similar to that. It's Pet Supply Plus. They're like a, a new one of those type of things. And um, I think it's the perfect job for him. Like for the first time being in the work field, they use him like three or four days a week, six hours a day. So he's making his own money and he feels good. Good. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. Yeah, he's... um. I think they need girls. They must. They must be busting. That's all I could think of, because I know. I forget it. At that age, I was a maniac. I need to go out and meet a girl. I'm sure they're not going to talk to you about it, though. Doesn't matter. I know everything about them. They're in the house all the time. I no. know I mean, none of them. They're all virgins. More information than I need, Neil. Thank you, though. Hello, I John. Be, I shouldn't be saying those things on t on the uh, on the uh, on the show. <sighs> Hello, John. Refracted. I'm gonna get coffee. That was a scary conversation. Well, I sometimes I think they're part of the 144,000. <laughs> you know, because it says that there will be 12,000 from each tribe, and. Um, you know, it's 
Was Elijah going to come by and do a presentation on a... I, yo, uh, you're reading mom. my freaking mind. I was just thinking the same thing. Elijah put something in Master B the other day that he wanted to go over. So, of course, I gave him permission. I said, sure, no problem. <laughs> yeah, the Martin Bailey fallacy. Yeah, Martin Bailey. What is that? A way of making an argument with a major factor and a minor factor, and if you address the main main factor, you readdress the argument or subvert the argument onto the minor aspect, so you can belittle it. Or if you focus on the little the belittling of the little bit, you make it seem like it's the major part of the argument. Oh, what is it called? Mont and what? Bailey akin to a castle so down the road from me we've got warwick castle and it's got a main uh what you call it compound that's on a big hill and then around it it's got the central defenses and then moat so it's like a teardrop shape look it up not the castle the fallacy yeah but i'm sure um I'd never heard of it, so I'm, I'm regurgitating what I read about it that uh, Eli sent me, because it's not something I'm familiar with. And I was going to ask him to give us an example in text, but thinking about it, having never heard it before, you need someone to actually be able to explain it to you there and then. So obviously I read the fallacy, but I, could, I couldn't myself think, all oh, right, I can give you 10 examples of that. Now, it might be the case that after Eli points it out, we'll go, oh, yeah, <laughs> right, that's all they do. But we just don't know yet. So when Eli comes and explains the fallacy to us and how he thinks it's contextually important, because I didn't spot it, did you? Uh, yeah, I think it's the earth curve argument where they jump to refraction as the Bailey and then the Mott is the earth curve calculator. We'll see. We'll see how he phrases it. Maybe that's what he's going on about. I don't know, because he didn't give an example, did he? He just said he wanted to focus on this fallacy. Oh, great. Well, I love a good fallacy. Yeah. Especially if I've never heard of it. He's not going to show up today. We've hyped it up too much. Not really. We just talked about it a little bit. I mean, if it ends up being on a different show, it doesn't matter. Not training to time, as QE would say. Right, it'll be on the show that we don't talk about it beforehand. That's okay as well. <laughs> if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't immediately jump out at me as, wow, yes, they do that all the time, then, you know, i I'm going to need EI to break it down for me. Because it was very, very key. Well, like the saying, yeah. moving the globe post, isn't that kind of like Martin Bailey, though? I don't no, know. That's I don't know. We'll see once, once he breaks it down with a contextualized example and hopefully a specific one that's got a person's name attached to it. Wait, you said you said the fallacy is taking a minor part and making it the major, right? Did I hear that correct? Because I'm driving. No, attacking, like attacking the wall, rather than attacking the main castle. Yeah, where the main castle being the main argument and the wall being some subterfuge that doesn't get you any closer to winning because it's not the main part of the objective. Yeah, you understand? I understand, okay, it from got a, it. I understand it from a castle point of view, <laughs> not from a fallacy point of I view. I got yet. it. Me explaining I bet our QE knows what it is. Me explaining how castles work isn't very useful, though, is it? You know what I mean? That's why I'm smiling. Yeah. Well, I'm going to send him a message. Where the hell is he? supposed to be here you you send the message like that you got to be right up front and center getting on here before me do you 
Nobody's got any obligation to do anything, Neil. Well, 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 well. See, <laughs> this is where I, I have to dip. I, I have to. I have to put you in your place here. We are at the cutting edge, and we've been here for some time. It's very important what we do here. So people need to be here. Yeah, think of us as like Shaolin monks or something. We can spend most of the day chilling. Nathan, you do not understand what you're doing. I can clearly see that. You just think it's a YouTube channel. We're rocking the world, Nathan. Rocking the world. Peace has made us weak. Victory has defeated us. Victory hasn't made, but it's made us weak or complacent or any of those other things. Uh, no, I, I think John is absolutely right. We're sitting here like King Tut. Well, let's go. Let's, we got to ramp it up. If you haven't noticed, everybody, even our own side is against us. I was yeah. joking with that. That's a Bane uh, reference. Uh, he said it in Batman, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. It's an awesome movie. Yes, I'm familiar. Speaking of Batman, that was pretty cool, though, on the Oscars the other night. They had Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger presenting one. <laughs> and, of course, they went at it with, like, how uh, Batman killed him and how he killed um, Danny DeVito. And then he goes, you know what? There he is right there. And they, they pointed to, um, what's his name? Michael Keaton. <laughs> and he was just standing there with like a dead stare face. And he was gesturing with his two index fingers to, come on, bring it on. It was funny. You had to see it, man. He threw me out the window. Where is he? There he is. I guess you had to see it. Did I lose you guys? Hello? Oh, that's chicken just great. Just great. We're just still here, you Nathan. I mean, uh, Neil. You didn't hear a word I said? No, no. You came in loud and clear. I say it's the Neil show oh. this morning. I'm talking about the Batman. He's got the Batman thing with Michael Keaton. Who's that, Mighty Mush? And I never... I You're breaking up the vaccine, Batman Roxy. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, my kitchen Wi-Fi. Where did John go? Neil? Anybody? I'm here. Where did John go? I'm here. His um his internet is really spotty.
when you listen back to the show, it, it I understand what you mean. Because you hear him like cutting in and out, like not full sentences going through. And what he says is important. And um, it just doesn't come in really clear. Yeah, I mean, there's probably not a great deal he can do about it if he hasn't got good internet. I heard uh, somebody from Discord. Who's who is who's there? Mighty Mush, or was that AI? It was Vaxi, whatever he's called, Vaxi Waxi, that he was breaking up. Oh, what happened to that other guy? The bacon guy. Is he still hanging around in there? I don't know, Neil. Because uh, the other day when you smacked him around a little bit, oh, that was lovely. I listened back the other day. When I, when I listened back to it, oh, it's, it's so good, man. No, I'm a flat earther. I'm not saying it proves the sphere. But he's trying to say it proves the sphere. Yeah, they're liars. He's just mocking people. Just lying. Yeah. Now, now let, me let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. I was just going to ask you, when these things happen, right? And how does it, what happens when the show's over and it's the after show? They just keep chanting the same thing over and over again? That's when they pop in. Once the show's over and the after show, then they come in and start talking about whatever they want to talk about. And then they disappear after they get shut down. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. A guy like him is very dangerous because say you got some new guy coming in, listening, everything's making sense. Then you got this meatball coming in with this nonsense. And that's what they're there to do. They're just there to um, cause confusion and doubt with people that are not really grounded and rooted in flat earth to the point where they don't have a belief. They know it's flat. No, I think it's good that new people hear both sides because, I mean, let's face it, our side gets it wrong sometimes. I don't know how long you've been in this, Neil, but. Hmm. But, I mean, we know both sides. We like If you're not a uh, flat earther or part of that community, then you only know the one globe side anyway, so. I still hear our guys get it wrong. Yeah. Especially in this room a lot when you guys let people talk about 30 mile wide triangles and then don't call them out on it being a triangle. <laughs> we call them out all right. We just let them talk. We have a policy here that everybody gets to speak no matter how dumb or uh, unsavory you think it is. We don't shut anybody down. Yeah, but look, well, if yeah, Oakley's here doing his show, Hold on. If Oakley's here doing a show, though, this isn't like everyone gets to say their piece. It's pretend like Wits is doing his event here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's left lane yeah. yeah, left lane doesn't have to talk today. You know what I'm saying? This isn't like everyone gets their fair sh say Oakley's doing an event now. You know what I'm saying? Like last week, it was a, li a little confusing. Or whenever last time Oakley was there. Still your house. I like that. That's well, still your house. We have to respect that. If your rules are... No. Hold on, Nathan. To... He just he just said a good thing there. Leave him alone. I no. like what he said. That is because when he the first rule. came in. Hold on. If if, if you want me to just rule, back him yes, up because he's me. backing me up, right? First of all, thank you, Vaxi. However, he's that's just basically completely ignored what SE's just said to him. Well, <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention it. He's gone. No, here we have rules in this server where. Our opponents get to finish their nonsense waffle regardless. Okay, well, if Nathan's here, we'll ignore that. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's their rules, and you express that. Just say, okay, thank you for letting me know, and then hope you don't break them. That's it. 
At least okay, acknowledge let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When we have an event, though, hold don't... on, Neil. When we have an event. Neil, hold on, man. When we have an event, though, Oakley, it's not like that. Like, people can do specific things. You know what I mean? So, like, if if you don't want to have people go on and on, it's fine. You don't have, We don't have to. Like, don't, nobody has to. You know what I mean? It'd be nice, but, I mean, sure. whatever, if that's how you want to do I'm it. I'm glad to hear it. But it's nice. If the base rule's been reasserted immediately by SE, you've got to acknowledge that. That's how, because that's, it's his house, isn't it? Hold on, I got to ask you a question. Please, on Flat Earth Debate, no on our panel, when you run your show, Nathan, on, on our Discord, we do the same thing. We let people, we don't shut down anybody's argument. We let it go the first time. But we're not going to let him keep going over it and over it and over it. He's going to be heard. The argument's going to be clear, and then that's it. Sure. But the guys from this server can listen back to the shows that get produced from this server and make their own assessment on whether or not letting someone repeat the same thing 10 times because I've had 20 seconds to reply, and then they want to regurgitate and rinse and repeat it a second time through the top of me with no objection. But no, we've got to let them finish. If that, when they get to hear it back... They can make their own assessment if that's a good way to be or not, can't they? That's up to them. But in the meantime, it's their rules, Neil. You know, last time I was going by our rules, and I can't. Our house. I'm not saying don't go by their rules, of course. And we're thankful that they're even an opening up. For for you to do there your you show go. from here, there you that's go. a great thing. That's more like it. We're grateful that they're allowing us to even be here. I think what he was saying, because if you listen back to the show, somebody yelled from the peanut gallery, and I'm saying who it was. Hello, I'm here too, and that's what I think he's trying to say. It doesn't mean everybody's got to be heard, like me. I don't have to be heard, so. I think that's what he was talking about. Well, some, when, when Witsit does his show here, we have a stage. We do it as a stage show. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't... Like, we do events here all the time, and it's not like... It changes the whole format of this Discord, where now not everyone gets to say their piece whenever they want. You know what I mean? It's just different when there's an event going on. <laughs> yes, I gotcha. And I like that. Are we it's not set, in... Settle down, Neil. It's, um, it, it'd still be nice if everyone got to say their piece. And, you know, let's not do any insults, please. Please, no insults. That, that is definitely still a rule, though. No matter Hold what. on. Are you, saying, are you saying that we're rude and we insult people? That is not true. I'm offended. I'm out of here. It's just a general... It's a general... The, the way I the see server. it, if your argument is solid, you should be able to accept criticism and discuss your argument. Right. You're so relevant no matter what. Yeah. Right. I agree. That's well, just every, my opinion. Well, everybody should be able to keep symmetry. So symmetry is basically everybody express their viewpoint equally. If your viewpoint holds out and if the logic within your viewpoint is strong, it should be nothing, you know, even if someone is insulting you, your viewpoint should, the logic within your viewpoint should overcome that. So if somebody okay. got to insult you because their viewpoint or the logic within their viewpoint is not strong enough to basically rebut an argument, then that just shows something about them. But if that person that's insulting you, logic is basically stronger than the viewpoint that you are saying, and they pointing out that the viewpoint that you, the logic within your viewpoint is flawed, then that's when it seems like it becomes a problem for you. And how much time do you uh, dedicate to somebody's flawed premise? If I were to, for example, start an argument on the basis that unicorns are definitely real and then proceed to spend the next 10 minutes waffling on about that based on that premise, is it tolerable to just allow that for 10 straight minutes? No, they can't monologue. Yes, that's monologuing. So how long? We do go back and forth over the same thing. Not like it's it gets a little repetitive, and we do have to move it on eventually. Yeah. 
It was eventually. Just like when someone says something like, uh, well, you didn't answer my question when you definitely did answer the question. You don't have to answer a question more than once. No, no, as long no. as that the audience heard that you did answer the question, you don't have to keep going on 10 minutes after answering the same question, repeating yourself. Okay, so my, someone my say, is, but unicorn. Yeah, at what point do you stop them? So if, if I start with, based on the fact that unicorns are definitely real, and then I start in my diatribe, all of it is nonsense waffle. At what point do you stop that nonsense waffle? You're saying, what, not 10 minutes, that's, that's a monologue. So five minutes of nonsense waffle about unicorns is okay? I mean, you could do whatever you feel. You got a little show going here. You know I'm what I mean? You. This is an event. I'm asking Dude. the server. At Dude, what we point? Loop it. I've been looping in circles with these guys for years now, so I don't even I don't even know. Like we we do move it on when it gets starts to get circular and people are just go, looping in circles. So yeah, but he's I mean, asking how long. He's asking how long do you will let him go? He's asking how I long know, do you allow the lecture to go? A lecture? No, I mean if two people are going back and forth and it's just like looping in circles, but. Then we'll move it on. I don't know. Five, ten. We give two couple people five, ten minutes. So you're telling me you're content to listen to a flawed premise for ten minutes. I mean, it it honestly it depends. Like you know, not for me. I want to stop that immediately. As soon as I recognise that it's you complete nonsense, it. waffle. I mean, obviously, you guys yeah, give you it five, ten minutes, or or you could just interrupt while I'm giving my opinion on it. Go ahead. Try no, again. Man, go ahead, my bad. Thanks, I was. I want to stop that immediately. The moment someone says, based on the fact that unicorns are real, I want to be able to stop them immediately and say, no, they're not, so that we don't waste ten minutes or five minutes or thirty seconds or five seconds listening to some stupid idiot telling us that unicorns are real. Now, in my mind, if that happens, I'm going to be told off for saying that that's a stupid idiot. But the guy that says unicorns are real and then starts to launch into a diatribe about how they're real and stuff that's based on them being real, yeah, and me saying that's idiotic, I don't really want to be told off for that because it is idiotic to base a premise on unicorns being real and then waffle on a bit about it for five straight minutes or two minutes or 30 seconds or one second. It should be stopped immediately. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, if that's what you want Was to do in your the... show, I mean, you could you could shut them down, dude. It's fine. No, I, I, I'm, I'm bringing it... it up as a discussion point because those aren't the rules of the server. Therefore, it's it's contentious and interesting because we have different views on it. In some people's mind, oh yeah, if someone's got an opinion on holistic medicine, then we should let them waffle on for five minutes because they might have some validity at the end of it. You go, okay. I think we're missing the point here. I think we're missing the point. It's not to let them waffle on. It's up to you to stop it, right? Where, when you see fit, obviously, you're running the show. The only contention I have, Nathan, is the, the vulgar language. That's it, right? You can run the show any way you want. The only contention I have is the vulgar language. That's it. What's, what's vulgar? Yeah, several people are. Uh, well, name calling. We don't have name calling here because it starts a shit show. Excuse my language. So that's the main contention. And muting. I think muting if that's up, what? Well, muting. muting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You can stop at any. Of course, the, don't let them talk about unicorns. I wouldn't let that happen. But it's the way it's done. That's basically it. I can agree to that. I was getting ready to say, like, in the emperor's new clothes, when the little kid pointed out the emperor was naked and everyone laughed, because they didn't give him five minutes to explain himself, was the crowd unreasonable? No. Good point. There's yeah. a way to do it, right? Like oh, somebody brings up unicorns. You can say, 
look, we're not going to talk about uniforms. This is serious unicorns. This is serious show. You can say, listen, moron, blah, 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 blah. Which one do you think is better? Depends on the circumstances. <laughs> After about 10 rep repetitions yeah. of, of unicorns, by that point, you get a bit worn down and want to call the person a moron because they won't show up about it. Just mute him. Just mute him, Nathan. <laughs> I can't do that on your server. Yes, you can. When when the time is right. If someone's swearing at you and ad-homming you, you just mute him. That's what we do. We warn him once, then we mute him. That's it. I don't tend to do that. What I tend to do is threaten to mute them, but I'm actually very lazy and will seldom go actually into the Discord server, open up their name, find the bit that says mute and then highlight it with a tick. I, I rarely do that. So if you listen back to a show, uh, you'll hear me say things like, just mute him. Just mute him. Just get rid of him. And I won't do a damn thing. <laughs> I'll just carry on sitting here. <laughs> and if someone doesn't mute them, then they'll just carry on in the conversation. And if somebody from the server deems it necessary, because I, in my own server, it's not my own server either. I'm, I'm about as much an owner of my server as I am of this server. Yeah. Which is to say that I'm still governed by the server rules, even though it's flat earth debate server. I haven't made any of those rules. I think, I don't know if I know them that well, it probably changed a dozen times. And I don't, I don't keep up to date with the flat earth debate server, server rules because I'm never in there. I only use the voice chat. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of rules that I probably don't know about in my own server, if I can even call it that. So I call, to, I call out to the mods to do that. So it's like, your server you run it if if you deem it reasonable to mute this guy while he's chanting through my rebuttal that's had 10 attempts or something then that's up to the server mods to do you know what i mean i i will occasionally do it in my own server but very very rarely hey is that sc montreal yeah. in here hey how you doing brother i ain't, i ain't heard from you in a while you could share the other bro. day good, good. Good to see you, bro. Good to hear you. I see Montreal's got a voice that you can, you could hear him anywhere, in any server, and you know that's S.C. Montreal. Got that voice. So we're going to get a subject going, or we're going to... Uh, gr give gratitudes to each other. What's going on? I yeah. like the gratitudes to each other. No, we're discussing debate <laughs> techniques right now. My mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're discussing rules, aren't we? Yeah, that's <laughs> debate techniques. Same thing. Yeah. Oh. Well, the the first thing you want to get them in an agreeable situation, right? You want to get them agreeing with you. I mean, we're talking about debating. You want to find the positions that you agree on before you move forward, right? Socratically. <sighs> Depends on the yeah, debate. Doesn't it? It. I don't see that us and the Globers are trying to find common ground. I know that people have often expressed that notion when talking about debate in this subject arena. I just do not agree. Find common ground. I don't either. The only common ground that there is to have of any significance is the fact that we and they use a flat earth measurement for, for anything we assert or do. The fact that they have a globe belief that follows on from that flat earth measurement, that's the only thing we've got in common. I think well, that's see, what John was getting at. See, we have something in common. What, they need we, a flat earth as much as we that. do? In fact, how did you put it? You guys need a flat earth more than we do? Because you're the ones making claims left, right, and center. Right. If there's going to be a debate, then we can build on that because they do use a flat plane all the time. You can build on the fact that there is no longer a debate. I agree. The debate is over, Jack. But when you say we've been softened in victory or something like that, I don't see that as the case. I, th I see it as far more relaxing in 2024 as a consequence of knowing it's flat. But in years gone by, I didn't know. I 
strong flat earth belief. And that isn't good enough. Right, but I was I was making a joke from what Neil said. I'm I'm uh I, I agree. But I don't I don't really worry about it. I worry about flat earth less since finding out it's measured that way and measured that way for the globe to be functionally operational at all. It has to have been measured flat. You go, okay. That's it. It's game over. We'll see you. All right. So, so everybody go on vacation, right, Nathan? Not, really? Not everyone, no, no. Not everyone go on vacation. Just everyone breathe easy. Don't need to stress about whether or not there's going to be some Isle of Man debate with a flat Earth calculator called Earth Curve in the title. You don't have to worry about those things anymore because by my summary 10 seconds ago, it's a flat Earth calculator. You can show them how there's a flat Earth being used in it, how the Earth's being measured and calculated as a flat plane. And it must be so, otherwise some of the geometric principles applied in that Earth curve in name only calculator, actually a flat Earth differential calculation from eye level to surface level to infer Earth curve below surface level. Well, those sorts of summaries come real easy now, but all of them point to one thing, Earth's being measured flat. For your globe claim in this instance with an Earth curve mathematics. I didn't know that five years ago. Well, it was quite stressful back then. Now it isn't. Yeah, the the rise over run formula shows that Earth's a plane with topography. I mean, obviously the elevation profile is not curving up, curving down. They're using rise over run, horizontal plane, and taking elevations, uh, elevation uh, measurements off of that. So, yeah, exactly. Rise over run, the. Uh, principle shown in Google Earth where if you do an elevation profile for the entire surface of the known world, it's all flat. There's, there's not a lot more to do in terms of showing how the world actually functions now that we've connected it to the globe religion. How their religion had its genesis in a flat earth measurement. You know, what... what uh, maybe there will be some more fantastical revelations around the corner and every time we get a new one, black swan or uh, elevation angles, rise over run, as you've exampled. Any of these examples will be like eureka moments for a lot of people who are listening if they've never heard of it. But you go, okay, well, um, maybe yeah, we were... 20, 2025 will have something even more exciting than the globe religion comes from flat earth measurements. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I don't know what else. What else could we? What else could make you more at ease with the fact that Earth's flat? We were talking a few days ago, a couple days ago. I think it was Wits that brought, I can't remember who brought this up, but somebody said every time money's involved, Earth's flat. You know what I'm saying? Every time we build something, every time they fly uh, an expensive plane, like all the stuff that, that would take money or, or be expensive if we messed up, Earth's flat. Yeah. Yeah, when it, when it actually comes to dealing with the world, how it actually is, you can't assume there's a massive cavity opening up ahead of you if you're going to fly a plane. Because the pilot's going to think there's an area opening up ahead of him that he can fly in. And there isn't. It's an extended plane. So they need to know that. Even in the calculations that the ballers come here and assert that they say prove their religion or whatever, level is never curving. Ever. All right, let's get it on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Shout out to Godzilla37 in the super chat. It says, Arwen is so much wizard that even Dunning-Kruger is blushing. Oh, please don't insult Arwen in the super chats. Thank you for the support anyway. Really appreciate it. You do a bit of housekeeping. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge, formerly known as the curve of the earth? <laughs> That says it all right there, doesn't it? No. Earth is flat. There are no horizons on a globe. Slope a dope. What's the slope a dope now? That's when Muhammad Ali was against the ropes and let George Foreman throw his punches until he was exhausted. And then he got knocked the F out. 
No, that's the rope dope Well, that's what a slope dope is. No, that's a rope dope It's taken <laughs> off. Yeah, but we took it off the the rope dope because that's basically what happened. It's an impossibility uh, to have a horizon on a spherical Earth. Why? Horizon level. Why? It's orientation is horizontal. Horizontal is we parallel just to said the horizon. Of the horizon. To describe a slope yeah. or a slant would be the deviation from the horizontal. If you can't get that by me saying, hello, horizon, then there's no hope for you. No, I, I can't get it from just hello, horizon, Neil. That's insufficient. Woefully. It's horizontal. How are you going to get... Okay, if Earth is a sphere, how are you going to get anything horizontal on a sphere? I don't know. How would, how would that affect it? I mean, how would that affect it? Yeah, on a sphere, what's the problem? Why can't I have a horizon? Because it's horizontal and a sphere is, is round. It's spherical. Oh, perfect. Okay. You, you can have it going through it. Okay, maybe. that's all we were fishing for. That's all you need. You just need to lay it out, Neil. Come on. You know Curve. I'm freaking driving and doing a million things. Oh, that's fine. You brought it up. Yeah, the geometrical horizon only exists in the maths anyway. And, and yeah, but you can't give them the mass because it doesn't exist. Line on the surface. In spherical time, geometry, Jeremy. you can't have a straight. In spherical geometry, you can't have a straight. There's no straight lines on the surface. Yeah, they're, they're all curved. Yeah, indeed, there are no straight lines on the surface of a curved anything. But that's well, that's the, the, that's the... You wouldn't believe how many times I've had to explain to somebody when I'm trying to. But they'll just tell you it's so big it's flat, right? Yeah, but that's the unique thing about a sphere, right? There are no flat surfaces on a sphere. Right, so you can't have a horizon on a sphere then. Correct. But they beat themselves up with that. That's why uh, QE named it the slope of dope after the rope of dope. And you can't have a horizon on a sphere and you can't claim a geometrical obstruction without level being a horizontal plane. You wouldn't believe how many times I got to explain to these guys what slope is. It's like it's like a debate on what slope is half the time when I <laughs> say that rise over run. It's it's weird. It, it always well because they're holding they on to a belief though. That's is. why, right? Sorry. Or they just don't really don't know what slope is. I don't know. Okay. Everybody, everybody knows what slope is. Come on. Moving on from slope, right? Did Did you all just hear what John just said though in Discord? You repeat it, John. So we're going to focus on it. You can't claim a geometrical obstruction uh, without level being horizontal. So for earth curve maths, guys, I don't know if any of you have got a diagrammatical example to hand in your server that you can grab or someone can post or you can have a look at it. If not, it doesn't matter. You just have to go by what I say. Inside the earth curve maths, there's two horizontal lines that are represented and labelled. One says surface level and the other says eye level. And the way that the maths actually works is by way of calculating the differential between those two things after height is included in the equation. So as you raise an elevation, the difference between eye level and surface level can be calculated out to give you a point Below surface level, that's a horizontal plane that you can label with an X and call horizon. But in order to extrapolate that, this point below surface level that they call Earth curve, you require 
Earth to be a horizontal plane of reference. You require surface level to be level in Earth curve maths. That is to say, in Earth curve maths, Earth is measured flat. You require a surface level that is parallel with eye level for this maths to work. It's right there in the maths. Earth's being measured flat in Earth curve maths. Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, I didn't well, know that. What's that what, what, on Bill or the other guy? All of them. I, I just posted that, that in the chat. All I of them. All the, the, the way the, the maths... Calculator. That's how it functions. That's how the maths operates. It takes reality, surface level, and parallel eye level with it and calculates the difference between the two to give you a point below surface level called math, mathematically called Earth curve, marked with an X and labelled horizon, below the surface level. And it's right there in the maths, surface level, eye level. It's part of the mathematical functionality of that derivation called Earth curve. You require Earth to be a horizontal plane of reference and you require eye level to run parallel with surface level for the maths to function. Earth must be flat for Earth curve maths to work. That's brilliant. Yeah, the horizon, <laughs> the horizon, the horizon is at surface level and not below the surface level. No one looks at the horizon below surface level. So there is no only exists but, in the maths. Yeah, in orthographic view, there's a below surface level maths only horizon marked with an x but as george has pointed out there is no below surface level horizon in reality we just have a horizon but what the calculator actually does is gives you a optical resolution loss limit that they place below surface level mathematically but that optical loss is just the calculation the differential calculation between eye level and surface level so where they're calculating out what will disappear bottom up, that's an optical resolution loss calculator. That's what the actual Earth curve calculator is. And flat Earth optical resolution loss calculation, that's what it actually does. They just call it Earth curve. They were also using the same maths in the, I'm going to say, late 1700s. This was presented to us by Tenth Man in a very, very old navigation book where they were showing site reduction tables and how they calculated out their best guess for where the horizon would be at distance. And it's the same maths as Earth curve maths, but described with the flat Earth. The same flat Earth that's called surface level in Earth curve maths. So they've taken an existing mathematics to calculate where your Resolution will diminish when looking in the distance and utilising the horizon for navigation on a flat Earth. The calculation's then been taken and go, ah, we could call this Earth curve. And that's what, exactly what they've done. They're not even clever. They're not even doing it from scratch. It's not like they've back-engineered Earth curve from flat Earth. They've taken an existing mathematics for optical resolution loss and called it Earth curve. Psychopaths are nothing but good at recycling. That's all they can do. They've got no original ideas. They just steal. They're stealing an old, uh, uh, I say 1700s, probably early 1800s. I forget exactly what the date was. And Tenth's not around to ask. But I'm sure my panel will back me up that we all had a good look at this and went, whoa, it's just Earth Curve maths. Yes, it is. So what stops a guy like Left Lane from from putting this together? I don't. Why do you care? I don't. I'm just curious. You're always curious. Why? I think it. Um, John. I think it might be the authorities that are telling him that the emperor is not naked. He's accepting that instead of just looking at it on his own. Look, I don't want to decry anyone's beliefs. If they want to believe that the Emperor has got invisible clothes on, that is entirely up to them. 
I don't care whether the Emperor's got clothes yeah, but... or not. I know he hasn't. Yeah, but that's... Sorry, Nathan. That's my point, though. Everybody, I think what it is is that they're just going to rely on consensus and they have it all worked out. Like, look at that guy Flatsoid was, uh, let's not say debate, having a conversation with the other day. He said, it's all laid out. We know Earth this is a sphere. And I would need so much evidence to turn my viewpoint around, to, something to that effect. Because he's listening to what consensus is saying, what the TV says, what your politicians say, and what the pseudoscientists say. Even they say that level is a horizontal plane. Only in like one definition is it labeled conforming to the curvature of Earth. And that's immediately contradicted in the same definition. Got 52 people yeah, watching. Yeah, let me ask a question. If I'll just do a quick call to action. Please share the show. Very warm welcome to all 52 of you watching already. Go ahead. I was wondering if I could put a question out there since we have a lot of people listening and there's a lot of people from different groups listening. Shout out to everybody. You know who I'm talking about. Let me ask a question. Is flat an orientation? Generally, colloquially, dude, yes. we're on a plane with we're on a plane with topography, dude. People are taking shit way oh, too yes. way too literally. So we had this discussion a couple of weeks back, Montreal. So, if I was to tell you to lie flat, would you go and stand up against a wall, or would you go and lie on the ground or on a bed? Which would you do if I asked you to lie flat? Oh, I'd probably lie on my couch or something. Yeah, or on the floor, yeah. Right, so colloquially, as a generalism, people use flat as an orientation. If you say flat, and it is in context as an orientation, it will mean horizontal. You can add extra context to that word. Put yourself flat up against the wall, but up reorientates that flatness. So if I say, I'm going to push you flat up against the wall, again, you've got a context that I'm not going to lay you down flat. Yeah? So you have to slightly recontextualize flat if you're going to put it in the vertical orientation. Because typically, colloquially, flat means horizontal if you're going to use it as an orientation. doesn't always stand true, but 99% of the time well it does. Everybody agrees well, see, with Nathan. That's the thing. <laughs> the Ryan contextualization that, uh, comes from the conversation. Ryan said that flat was a description and you couldn't measure flat. Couldn't measure uh, a description. Here we go. So that's, why, so that's why he won't say the earth is measured flat because you can't measure a description. Yeah, strictly. Oh, accurate. yes, he You're does say earth is measured flat. flat. Yeah, it's not a gym. No, he he he's correct. Say it. Yeah, he's correct. He said he wouldn't say it. Yeah, strictly speaking, it's a slight misspeak. But I don't care. No, no. How did you measure a description? That. It's contextualized you, within the conversation. Hold on. It's contextualized within the bucket. Try again, John. One more no, time. Go ahead, John. It is contextualized within the conversation. It is not always an adjective. Sometimes it's an adverb. Depends on how it's used in a sentence. This is ridiculous. Are we going to pretend like we don't know what flat is now? Well, that's what I Brian think there's said. nothing more powerful. Shut up, better bear. I Maybe. think there's nothing more powerful whoa, whoa, than whoa, Earth whoa, is whoa, measured whoa, flat. Yeah. No need, Neil. No, Neil, I'm so going to let him go. Hold on. If you listen to the show the other day, look how much time this guy used with his same nonsense over and over and over again. How did you imagine? I hear you. It could be frustrating, bro, but we can't do that. Let's just chill out and, you know, let's go back and forth. Fine. I'm chilled. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead and, and present the measurements of flat. Horizontal. 
horizontal. Dude, I don't think anyone's saying it's perfectly flat. I don't think anyone's saying it's perfectly flat. We all know there's topography. No. But we know that it's... We know. No, no, no. Before you generalize, no, I would say that in navigation, it's dealt with as per perfectly flat within navigation. There is no elevation the changes clay, whatsoever. It's all the clay man, on the same sorry. horizontal plane. Well, the, so most the of claim and the demand that it's repeated so... is that. All right, go ahead. <laughs> the claim is that it's measured flat, and it's demanded that people say that it's measured flat. But so far, I haven't seen anybody come up with the measurements of it. Latitude. I went over it with you personally. I did. No, you didn't. You told me to shut up. You never go over anything latitude? with me. Latitude. Measurement. Yeah, that's a measurement. You said a measurement. Yeah, measurement with Polaris. Wait along the ground the points on the ground are your latitude lines that's a measurement the ground isn't flat though well, you, you don't think that the ground is flat when you take an angle from any position along a base to polaris at its gp that's its ground well, we went over that as well. sorry you do you want to just angle. remove edibaries just talk through me i didn't even there take breath you now on, object yeah. so you're now going to object to the fact that he didn't let me get to the end of that sentence Yes, no, we I was got about it. to do that. We got yes, it. I was about Thanks. to do that. Thank you. Elder Bear, don't interrupt. If you interrupt, I'm going to mute you. You won't be part of the show. We want you to be part of it, but don't interrupt. It. I want you to be part of the show, Elder Bear. But I personally have gone through this with you, a liar, several times, and detailed latitude with you personally. Now, you're saying I haven't. I have. When we measure along the baseline to the ground position of Polaris, that is definitely the ground. The lines that we're gonna measure for the angles, that position, system, latitude, is on the ground. It's a ground positioning system. So would you say the ones below the equator were just calculated out then, or? We're going to hopefully cover that eventually in time bandits. There's massive inaccuracies as you go beyond the equator and you have to take existing stars and their positions in the ephemeris or whatever you want to document it in the um, almanac beyond a fixed star. So, yeah, you can extrapolate out further and further with the system being weaker and weaker and the lines that they do infer get wrapped around a ball meaning that there's massive distance inaccuracies on a ball for obvious reasons in the South. So that, up until a certain point in our recent history, recent documented history at least, was a, a stumbling point for extra, extra, uh, extra exploration. But you have workarounds. But it doesn't alter the fact that the, one of the very first things I covered when I got here were the inaccuracies in the South. The fact that people, mariners specifically, would go and have massive extensions on their journey when traveling in the south. They didn't match the charts. Therefore, they'd be massively late. Right, but the angle measurements to those southern stars still require a baseline to the GP position at that moment. Now, whether that conforms to a celestial sphere model is irrelevant. We're talking about the baseline for the measurement, not the model that is inferred afterwards. Yeah, the measurement itself is just you measuring the not, base, not only that. which is flat. I just want to get Ed to bear, because he, he, he didn't think he'd been told. Now you've been told. We measure yeah. Earth yes. flat with latitude. The baseline to the spoke. GP is a flat Earth measurement. Hope we're clear. However many times you say ground does not mean the ground is flat. So ground position at GP. What's that for then, Edebert? It's a reference. It's but not ground, ground position is not the ground. C. Sorry, I'm asking you a question. going up and down. Did you notice that? So when ground you position. Sister, on the sextant, you were on the C going up and down. Obviously not flat horizontal level obviously not the surface but did you ignore what i said earlier in navigation oh, it is dealt with as perfectly flat there are no elevation changes you have to account for the fact that there's going to be undulations in the sea as you travel 
you'll take your height above sea level at the dock, at the port, the height of I. That's it. That correction remains the same every... Just remove him. He's just an intolerable man. You deal with that once at port, height of I. That's it. You make the measurement once. It's the same for absolutely everywhere. Doesn't make any difference. Yeah? That's it. One measurement. That, too, is a measurement of Earth, Edebear. Height of I above the deck. The deck being the ground. The same ground that we're referring to thousands of miles in the distance when we measure the ground position of GP. That's GP for Polaris. That's what we're measuring. So we've got the ground when we measure height of I, and we've got the baseline to the ground position at Polaris. Response from Edebear, it's not the freaking ground. Uh, yes, it is. It's, so it's Nathan Bryan went over argument. this with him. Like, we, we Adam went over this with him. Thing. If you listen to the show the other yeah, day, Jeremy. it was gone over, and he's going to keep going. Yeah, go right? ahead, Jeremy. Fine. They, these guys think the same thing. Also, we do. it's just some pedantic argument. It's just some pedantic argument. They think levels horizontal, so do we. Plum lines are parallel. There's just some issue with the ground having topography, which I don't know why anyone would deny that. Obviously, the ground has topography. I've dealt with this now. Yeah, three, it's, like yeah, I'm, it's, like it's, being, it's like it's falling on deaf ears. I've now said this to you guys. This will be the third time in the last 20 minutes. In navigation, no, no, there are no topology changes. It's dealt with as perfectly flat. Not a, zero elevation, none. Why do you keep saying, well, there's elevation changes? No, no. No, it's dealt with flat, like the maps. That's how it's treated. Yeah, but the plan, right. the map, and the, the elevation the, changes the map of topography. The, hold on, the, the, you're in a reification fallacy, though, at this point, because the Earth does have topography, and your map, if your map doesn't, I mean, the Earth still does. The map's not the terrain, right? That's not no. how celestial navigation well, works. So the point below each position that you're measuring, it's, say this again, in case people maybe deny it and say I haven't told them, the ground positions. Yeah? When you measure the ground positions, the elevation's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you measure that position, that angle, 20,000 feet in the air or on the ground. Because the ground is flat and it's dealt with as perfectly flat, every line, horizontal, will be parallel with the ground and all angles to the stars will match at all elevations. So it matters not what height you are. doesn't matter if you take the angle in an airplane at 40,000 feet on the top of Everest or sat in a rubber dinghy on the sea. They all produce the same angle. And any of those lines, so long as you've established a horizontal line, will be parallel with the ground. Therefore, the ground position from wherever you measure it is the same Always. Doesn't matter about the height. At all. Do you know why? Because of the way the stars behave. They do not change with altitude. Now, that in and of itself absolutely annihilates all notions of heliocentric distances and operations. Entirely. Because at elevation, they should alter. They don't. They stay the same. They match the books. They'll still be above the same ground at the same time at all heights of measurement without exception so no earth is dealt with as a perfectly flat plane in navigation the topo topographical changes matter not right yeah um, that doesn't even seem like it could be depicted or in a graph i'd like to graph that go ahead jeremy That wasn't me. Oh, whoever it was, or John, if not. Uh, it's me. Um, and then I want to add that, um, so if they want to claim that it's taking the measurement from the center of Earth and that the elevation wouldn't matter, 
but they would still have the problem of the curving path and diverging zeniths. So yeah, it's it's flat. It's not the diverging zeniths. You well, can't have diverging zeniths. The reason zeniths, why this is, of all. is done is for you to find. No, I, you want I'm to, talking about the you argument. You as the navigator, that... you as the navigator, you want to find your position, your ground position. You lost at sea. Yeah. So I think in order Nathan to do this triangulation to pinpoint these ground positions and compare to your ground position to find to find the distances so you can find your position on the ground, regardless if you're at sea. So it is ground position. Yeah. Um. Hold on, just a second. Um. I just wanted to cut cut that argument that they are measuring from the center of Earth as a possibility because the elevation change doesn't affect you know if you're on the top of Everest or at the seashore wouldn't affect the angle measurement, and that's accurate. Now, what I wanted to say was, now, if the anti-flat earthers are trying to say that, well, we're using it from the center of the Earth, that wouldn't work because there's a curving path as they travel the Earth that they would have to take into account, and then we would have diverging zeniths, and you wouldn't be able to navigate no. at, at, at all. No, so you wouldn't just have to cut that. Plus, it gets really, really, you really difficult. Angle, yeah. Right. It gets really hard to, to, to drill down to the centre of Earth to take a measurement, though, doesn't it? If you're going to infer that that's what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just wanted to... I just wanted to... That was clear to the audience, mostly. Hopefully. Or, well, or, to, or, the, or to position it correctly for, for future arguments as well. Zenith is 90 degrees to the ground. You don't get 90 degrees on a spherical surface. So they don't have zeniths to have them diverge to begin with. Secondly, um, the idea that a measurement is a reification fallacy is, is wrong. It is only when you try to conceptualize it within a model that it becomes a reification fallacy. So just gotcha. yeah, because to make this, that clear. This is like a magical idea, right? That the zeniths are the same, like the angles are the same from high above and below. So like, that's not something you could depict orthographically. So what do you think the explanation for that is? I'd love to know the majesty of the right. heavens will never give us, we'll never have an explanation for this, right? Why they don't change as you go up higher, why the angle remains the same. I am um, damned if I know. Yeah, the only thing that, we can that. come to the conclusion is that the stars do not obey our concepts of geometry. That doesn't mean the ground doesn't. Well, well, I mean, if it's a nonlinear relationship, it, it does. It'd be a logarithmic relationship, optically. What does that mean? It's just a curved, it, it, there's a curved limit. I mean, I would never say it, it ultimately defies our geometry. That's not, that's not true. So. Okay, if it, if it obeyed our geometry, as you raised in height, you'd get closer to it. Okay. But it doesn't do that. So it doesn't obey our geometry, you it's it. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying if we go crazy high in the sky, the star will stay the same place? Do you have no idea how the stars behave, it's it? Have you ever actually well, looked yeah, at them? Please tell me, where you made a measurement over 180 I asked you a question. Like that. Based on your question, you, I'm just going to make a no statement of fact. Of you have no idea how the stars behave, do you, it's it? Uh, yeah, I know. You just asked that me. You, you just asked me if at height they wouldn't change even a little bit. Do you want to ask me that again? And I'll just declare it again that you haven't got the slightest idea what the stars do. Why do you talk about yeah, the stars? If you want to be retarded and act like it counts for a answer that bit question. Of answer your own different... question then. Do they change oh. even a little bit as you go up in height? Uh, Whitsy, we answer that for me. We, we, we wouldn't know because you'd have yeah, to we go do to know. Extreme high. Yeah, we do know. Whitsy, you don't know. Why do you? Well, you don't know. You let's just let's just stop know? talking a second, please, okay. Whitsy. Okay. Okay. Do you mind, Whitsy? I'm trying to respond. Why is Whitsy uh, now chanting through me? Can you stop Whitsy from yeah, chanting please, through me? Excuse me. I was in the middle of something. Whitsy's decided that because he's being corrected, he's going to chant through me. Can you stop him from doing that, please? That's not what happened. You interrupted me. You interrupted yeah, me that's three not times. True, Sorry, Witsit doesn't know what the stars do. He's asked a question. Now it seems I'm being perpetually chanted through. I'm going to just state a fact. Witsit doesn't know how the stars work. He's asked a question about whether or not they'll change at altitude. That tells me unequivocally he doesn't know how they work. Well, do you have like a measurement of like a boat? I'm talking to Witsit. Talking to Witsit. Talking to Witsit. And then like a. 
you know, a helicopter above it or a balloon right above it and measures the same star angle. All right, I'm hey, so uh, uh, Excuse me. Um, uh, as he's he's running the show, he's it's a show that he's throwing here. So please reframe. He's he said he was talking to Ritzit. Please do not continue, Tora. Ritzit. Okay, so based on I'm your not question about minor. Uh, th yeah, that, uh, that means yeah, not that, that means I was talking to you. That, that that's not your you invitation to start don't. taking control of the conversation. Which it's the second time he's done it. Mods. No second time he's done it. Show. Second time he's done it. He understands I'm about to start telling him something, so he starts jabbering first. No, it's it. No, I'm the one you telling you something, and he's not going to stop. So this tactic's never going to end, is it? This tactic's never going to end. I'm never going to get my chance. Now, Raki is doing it. Everybody's everybody's white knighting. Can you can you take control? What's going on? I'll try again. You ask me a question. Someone else. I haven't asked anything. I'm going to tell you something when you finally stop waffling because you know something's coming your way. I'm telling you, you don't have any justification to be talking about what stars do based on that question you've asked me. To ask that question tells me in no uncertain terms that you, Witsit, do not know how the stars behave. That's a fact. Answer your own question. Through me. Uh, Answer okay, your own oh, question. Because I interrupted him right then. Yeah. This dude is such a joke. Somehow he comes in this server and then calls me all kinds of names, and then I go to respond, and I get server muted three times. Since when yeah, did that just, happen? I don't know. Let's just call it one at a time, please, guys. Okay. I'm not talking about minor elevation changes. The stars are very far away. If you weren't retarded, you would know that. I'm talking about immense distant changes. You wouldn't really? know if they change or not, unless you have evidence of a measurement super high in the sky, which you don't. So claiming that they don't obey geometry is a stupid claim. Thank you. Sorry, they don't it's obey our geometry time. because when we raise in elevation, they stay at the same angle measurement. Now, if they obeyed our geometry, like a lighthouse, if I'm standing next to a lighthouse and I measure the angle up to it and I'm having to crick my neck to look up it and it's a 80 foot lighthouse, yeah? If I raise up 80 foot, guess what? It's no longer an angle measurement. I'm straight parallel with it, aren't I? Because I've raised up and it obeys how we interpret things to be measurable with angles when we have a relationship with them with height. As you go up, the angle decreases. You raise an elevation with respect to the lighthouse, the angle you measure decreases. The stars do not do that with it. Hey, does, does, the amount, does the amount that the angle changes vary with distance? Yes for, or no? For the, for the stars? Yes or no? For the stars? You can't answer yes or no. Sorry. Do, do for, the, for the stars? Do anything. Right, and we're talking about the stars and how they <laughs> do not obey those rules. You don't know that. <laughs> Now you're laughing. Hey, so far, you know? he's called me retarded, and now he's laughing through the top of my sentences. Yeah, you call me retarded. Could you please first. mute him while I try and talk? Because he's now jabbering through the top of me please. and insulting me and calling me retarded. I don't you like call it. Call me retarded first. Can you please stop okay, him from doing this? Time. I'm trying to reply, and he just won't shut yeah, up. I'm just, I can't believe please, can you shut him up? Please, guys, let's not call names. No name calling. Yeah, I'd rather not be called retarded. I'd just like to respond to him without him laughing at me or calling me first. names, and now he won't shut up. Whoever did it first. Yeah, still doing it. Still not getting my chance to say anything. It's just an endless barrage monologue from Witsit, and he's laughing and calling me names. I am not retarded. Is he ever... Can someone server mute him so I can actually get a chance without Witsit rumpusing me I'm continuously? I'm server if, if I think Nathan only gets to, like, run me here. I'm never going to get a chance to talk, Bro, obviously, which it's not going to allow it, so I'm just going to remove myself from this my server. He said my name, Jeremy. Okay. Give me a second, Nathan. Witsit, he's running a show. Same thing as a host. I don't care. I, well, good, goodbye. Oh, so when he runs a show, you just give him full uh, respect. But he don't want to give the same yeah, no, respect. No, he's server muted. Okay. He is server muted oh, right you. now. Please yeah, stop. Th yeah, thank you. I want to speak to the audience. Why are any of you listening to Witsit's garbage about the stars? Ether being the stars and their contained area. He doesn't even know how they behave by his own vision. He hasn't even looked at them. He doesn't know what they do. He hasn't got the slightest idea. To tell me that I would be retarded to assert that they don't obey our geometry. They don't. 
So what does that make Witsit, given he's told me I would be retarded to suggest that they don't obey our geometry? They absolutely do not obey our geometry, and Witsit did not know that. Yet he's peddling an entire faith in ether. He's never even looked at them, has he? This is a bit of a revelation. This is a bit embarrassing. Is this Witsit jabbering through me again? While I point out to this audience and this server, the Witsit, the man who jabbers on with long, incessant words that he doesn't probably know the meaning of about the sky and the stars, has never even observed what they do with his own two eyes and has got the gall to call me retarded for suggesting that they don't obey our geometry when they don't. So no, Witsit, how dare you call me retarded? I would suggest that a man that doesn't even know how the stars behave based on his own bloody vision of them shouldn't be going around telling people about ether. It's a disgrace. Before you start peddling this garbage that you cannot prove, I suggest that you actually learn what the stars do with your own eyes first. Like I've done. Like everybody on my panel's done. But you've got the nerve to call me retarded for knowing what they do. This is an absolute disgrace. Is there a point here? Earth Can is I... not flat. Earth is not flat. Can I ask a question? Of who? No, wait, wait, wait. Why? Just because he's running a show doesn't mean he can say my name and talk crazy about me. And then when I go to respond, he gets to scream over me and then I get muted. So, someone, hey, some moderator enlighten me how he can say my name and talk about me. Then I go to respond and don't get to because he's running a show. Someone enlighten me. The show responded me, through him. Let him finish. All right, this is, oh, go ahead. No one's going to no respond. Yes, yeah, so let's all keep it, please, guys. Let's not turn this into a mess, and we all go one at a time. None, none of the insults and name calling and personal attacks, please. Just this is your chance. Respond to his point. Well, yeah. Let's so, rewind for a second. I very calmly said I wouldn't say that. It could be a different type of relationship based on vision. That's a fact. I then asked him a simple question he couldn't answer, which is, does the amount, the angle changes vary with distance? The answer is yes. If something's further away, the rate at which the angle changes is different than if something's closer to you. This is like fifth grade stuff. Okay. No if worries. something's closer to me I and, heard the and first I time. increase my elevation, my angle to it changes faster, right? That's twice. Okay. I heard the first time the second time. Okay. Can you give me an exact measured distance to a star to back that, please? Go. It, no. I'm talking about a basic principle of how vision works if something's closer to me does the angle that i measure to it change at a different rate based on its distance i don't know let's have it with a star's distance and we'll find out which it no we can do it with the lighthouse you brought up if the lighthouse is closer to me and then i go up higher is my angle to the lighthouse that i measure going to change faster or slower than when the lighthouse is further away oakley all right, we're talking about the you stars, which you lost. It. You're smart enough to know that you lost. Okay, the point is that the no, we stars don't have a measured really distance to the stars, which it. I have we don't no have idea a measure. How far this... It's just ignoring me. I have no idea how far the stars are, Oakley. So, how can you make that assertion point? about how they behave when they do not change with altitude? Okay, listen carefully. I said you can't make the claim that you know they wouldn't ever change. At yes, high I can, altitude. and I do. It's a fact. They're fur. Wow. It's not Wow. Fact. So based on your it's... ignorance, no, I'm not going to let you babble on about unicorns any further. You don't know how the stars behave. Stop talking about them. He just got wrecked. Anyone in this room that acts like he didn't just get wrecked is lying so hard, coping so hard. So the stars are super far away. We don't know what rate that the angle to them Give me a change. distance. So we wouldn't... Give me a distance. We wouldn't know... Far away. What's that in meters? I don't claim a distance. So, so far away. You. So you don't claim a distance. You've just said they're far away. You double speaking clown. They literally would obey our understanding of geometry. If they're super far away, we wouldn't expect. So them to you don't know how far you don't claim a distance, oh. but now they're super far away. Therefore obeying oh. our geometry. How can you make a claim of exclusivity of geometry? If you don't have a distance, how can because you say they, they do don't, don't obey, obey geometry? If you don't have a distance.
Uh, sorry, do you need to repeat? Destroyed. Do you need to keep asking the same question? And then hopefully, How? if you keep saying it again and again and keep talking, question, I won't please. get to answer. Please, can the moderator shut him up while I answer him? Repeat my question. You asked about measuring them based on distance and the distance being far. I pointed out, you totally ignored it, that you don't know the distance. I furthermore, said, can you make a furthermore, Ugh. furthermore, they do not alter in angle as you raise in height. Okay. How can you make a claim of exclusivity of whether or not it obeys laws of geometry if you don't know the actual distance to them? Answer the question. Because they don't obey the rules. They don't change in angle as you raise in elevation. The guy's thick. I don't know what else to say. I've said it four times. Wait, wait. How would you know what rate they need to raise Because at? I've you looked the at them with shooter. it, unlike you. <laughs> how would you know the rate that they need to raise? They don't, don't change. The There's no them. rate. They're not changing. What part of this aren't you? Why does anybody give any credence to what Witsit says about the sky after this discussion? Any credibility, I have no idea. He literally doesn't know how they behave to his own vision. That tells me he's never even looked at them. Okay, you made the claim that they don't obey our, the laws of geometry. No, they don't. Know. In order they don't. Because I've looked claim, at them. In order to make that claim, you would it's need to. It's not a claim, it's a fact. It's not a claim, it's a fact. It can only be considered a fact based on how high you've gone, which is definitely not. No, of it's an of entire feet. principle of navigation, you stupid man. Guys, not please, man, come on. It's a principle it's so, so of navigation. Right? I'm going to respond to him, hopefully without him chanting the same sodding thing through me. No, wits it. It's not a claim. It's a principle of navigation. The fact that you have parallels to the GP because they are the same angle at all elevations, is a principle used to navigate. You're telling me like it's a claim. No, Witsy, you just don't know how the stars behave, son. And it's very telling and kind of pathetic. No, I know oh. that at the surface, with minor elevation changes, we treat them as if it's the same and there's no noticeable difference. That's expected. Is, is that how things... Stars are, Sorry, that's and that's how things behave normally? Is that, that how things expected. normally behave? Is that how a lighthouse would behave? Cut my conclusion off. You'll be right somehow. So yeah, sorry. Expected. When you're done, if just let me know. Super... Everyone else, can you, can you mute your worry, mics? Because I, I can hear scratchy, horrible background noises. If you're not talking, please that mute. Is Somebody was hot mic and I got him. Yeah. Thank if you, the Witsis. stars are super far away, it is expected. I heard that, that four times. Wouldn't. Okay, so then you yeah, can't... Yeah, I'd just like to insane. respond instead of the same diatribe and repetition I 16 can't. times. I mean, it's just insane. Like, he, he's scared is what's happening. Does he ever shut up? Witsit. You forced me Witsit, when so you ahead. raise in altitude, yeah, to the stars, do they behave the same as the lighthouse, like we would expect in conventional geometry? Is that what the stars do? We wouldn't do? expect that. The lighthouse is way closer. Are we, and we know the You're distance of the star. He's just scared, ladies and gentlemen. He just needs to keep his mic open indefinitely while he's getting this absolute pummeling and being exposed as not knowing how the stars work. It's plainly obvious talk. to everybody listening as he incessantly and continually interrupts me that he doesn't understand that when we raise an altitude with an object that we know how high it is, we can see a change in angle. With the stars, where we don't know how high they are, they don't change in angle. That does not obey conventional geometry. And that principle is set in stone for navigation. Which it started this discussion by telling me that it was, quote, retarded to assert that they don't obey our standard geometry, end quote, wits it. No wits it. They do not obey standard geometry. You've obviously never even looked at them. Okay, so it is just he's... a fact. It's just Go a ahead, fact that the rate at which they would change with elevation is relative they to the don't! They don't! Why do you keep telling oh the rate of change that they would change? They don't. No, let me try all right, but Oakley, real quick, say say you say you have something like uh, 
helicopter and it's a hundred thousand feet in the air just hovering there and you and you make an angle to it right and then let's say you move up a millimeter like would your angle change to that is that kind of the thing you're getting at with it no i don't yeah, do that no it's not a principle i'm using difference. no i don't do that no but in celestial navigation <laughs> you can take an angle to a star from any altitude and it will be the same regardless so in terms of what question. your example plays out with a helicopter i honestly can't think of any practical application or use in the real world for that. Meanwhile, the fact that the stars do not obey standard geometry, and it is definitely unlike what Witsit charged me with, not retarded to state that as fact when an entire navigation principle is based on it, just tells me that Witsit doesn't know how the stars behave. That's all it really tells me. That this clown who goes around talking about ether doesn't ever actually look at the stars with his own bloody Another eyes. Another personal attack. Another personal attack. How many does it take to have the show uh, moved? Is right. this the show you want here? Oh, uh, let's take him away, Nate Rakia. Go get him, David. No, I just don't like the personal Go attacks. Go get him. Yeah. yeah. Why, why personal attack and complain about being personally attacked? So let me get straight. Did, 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 did Rakia? Sorry, just just for just for just for a second, Rakia. Sorry, I didn't hear you objecting when he called me retarded. I tried to get in and got muted, Nathan. Yeah, guys, please. Let, just moving forward. Let's just all do this civilly. No personal attacks. Let's try not to, in, you know, no insults or any of that. Please, guys. Come no, on, just, just out of interest. Well, I, I, oh, no, no. Well, just calmly, let's just assess them. No, no. no we've been brought up and put on the table. I don't mind addressing it. Let's just assess it so we can get it all out of the way and it won't happen again. We'll go through both. I'm only reasonable. We'll start with Witsit. Witsit said it's retarded to assert that stars don't obey standard geometry. Now, let's just assess that, first of all, as a statement. It's wrong because it's correct as opposed to retarded to assert that the stars do not obey standard geometry. They don't. So Witsit was wrong, his insult was uncalled for and unnecessary and factually incorrect. Now, you insulted me first. Basis oh, oh, please, do you hear where I'm coming from? Hold on, let's not rewind that whole thing. Let's just move forward. You Should we just focus on me calling him a clown for going around telling people how the stars are and telling them about how the world is based on the stars and ether fields when he's never observed them with his own eyes? That, to me, is the ramblings of a clown because only clowns would start telling people how the stars are when they've never even looked at them and don't know how they no. behave. That's Hopefully, very clown-like. Seriously. Yeah, but I challenge Hopefully, you to a debate on Ether all, and you asked me how much would I pay you to do it because you were oh. so scared. <laughs> so stop bringing Guys, that up. This so you don't know how the stars behave. You don't. You don't know how the stars behave, Witsit. I don't need any help. I don't need any help. You don't know how the stars behave, Witsit. You had to ask me and then told me I was retarded for asserting that they don't obey standard geometry. They don't. It's not retarded, Witsit. That's what you leveled at me. Let me respond. So I was operating in good faith, and you cut me off before I asked my question. And this is the fifth time you said I had to ask you because I didn't know. But the question I was asking that you cut off was, I don't know, do you have some type of evidence I have never seen where people are making precise angle measurements to stars at extremely high altitudes? Because yes. I'm quite positive that doesn't exist. So oh, really, it. Uh, uh, would you like me to answer you? Did you know that they carry sextants on airplanes, with it? That's not extremely high altitudes. Oh, really? Really? Oh, sorry. The astronauts yeah, guys, claim just, that they just Let me don't... just run through my sorry, scenario. So, so, yeah, yeah, even you're, the... Even the, ash the ground. Hold on, wits it. You've been top trumped. Even the astronauts claim to be carrying sextants with them. They get as high as is claimed to get that you could get. Did you just invoke astronauts? Did this you said happen? not high enough. Do you want to trump that? How high do you need it to be? You can use them. Well, my... Wits it, wits it. I'm still talking. You can use them, wits it. This is going to be the seventh time I've told him. At any altitude, any altitude, it never changes. You don't need a different almanac if you're 50,000 feet or 100,000 feet. It's the same almanac, mate. Because the stars, you can still measure the same angle from them doesn't matter how high you are. You see, that's weird because you said it would be retarded to say that they don't obey standard geometry. 
They don't, mate. You can measure the same angle from all altitudes. It's not retarded. Not no, no. I, I would I say, say I would say that for someone to not know that and to claim it's retarded, and that be the same person that goes around telling people about the sky as an ether, that to me is preposterous. Like, if I was a follower of somebody that was telling me what the sky was and what the ether was, and they were held to task by someone who they just claimed was a retard for making a factual, accurate, factually accurate statement about how the stars behave, I would question my faith in you strongly, Witsit, if I was one of your followers. Just saying. Okay, cool. Well, um, we'll let the people decide like we did last time. So They will. Obviously, what I, yeah, and they did last time. So... Uh, it'll be the same thing, by the way. So what I actually said was retarded was to not acknowledge the fact that there's a relationship with change, the rate at which the angle changes in distance. I did not call you retarded till you called me retarded three times. When I first jumped in, I very calmly said, I don't think that I would say we know it doesn't obey laws of geometry. And I'm talking about, for one, the pr the claimed linear relationship, right, the one, the one degree per however many miles or whatever, that can actually be explained by vision. And then the lack of it changing at significantly noticeable rates could simply be explained by the stars being super far away. Okay, you would have to go very, very high to see any noticeable change if the stars are super far away. I gave you a very simple concept that can't be disputed. Lighthouse close, lighthouse far away. The rate of change to the angle changes based on distance. And you started denying that. And I said, that's retarded. No, I didn't deny it. That was my example, which is talking about. No, it wasn't. May I, point I used out the that lighthouse. It and doesn't I, matter. I asked, I asked four the work times. We started right now. I asked four times. Do we all agree that there's a relationship between the rate at which the angle to something in the distance changes relative to its distance? And the okay. answer is obviously yes. Okay. So you all said the, the, the one degree of whatever an hour or whatever? What was that exactly? You spoke quite quickly. Do you, want, do you want to just give me a bit more meat on the bones of that particular? What was it? One degree of what now? What were you talking about? I said the whole one degree per 60 nautical miles claim. I never said the word hour. I never didn't know what it was. Like <laughs> the linear, the claimed linear relationship on the globe of one degree per 60 nautical miles. How's, we, the, how's that used? What do you mean how's it used? They assume that the earth is curving. We see a declination of the stars. They claim the stars are infinitely far away. They claim they're all at the same distance and that they opt drop because the surface of the earth is curving no it could obviously, obviously no. be a product of how we see the surface. that's not yes. how it's used all right you want to bet five grand right you think one degree that's a flat <laughs> earth measurement for a start for every 60 nautical <laughs> miles i want to know how that's applied somewhere in maths how it's useful i and just practically... told you how i haven't finished with this how it's useful and practically applied you start talking about sphere distances that's wrong yeah so we're testing your acumen you seem to be speaking very quickly about one degree for 69 miles. How is that actually put into practical use? Where is it used? Put it into an equation that's actually used in practical life. Go. I just explained it. The stars Explain it again, slower. Drop at a, the stars drop at a certain rate in relation to distance. It's actually not entirely accurate. It varies slightly. They claim that if there's a one-to-one -one linear relationship because there's a celestial sphere of infinite stars around a presupposed globe, they say the linear relationship proves the Earth's a globe. That's what you guys have <laughs> ignored for five years while only talking about the same argument for five it years. It doesn't seem I'm to be listening to me. How is this practically applied in the real world? Not to make a fantasy sphere. How do we use it? In the real world, Witsit. This is the stars and uh, their I, uses. And so far, I just explained you, you, you haven't, Witsit. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking the question again now, would I? I know the answer, and you hear my panel itching to give the answer. All of they know, too. You bought up... me, please. One, one degree for every 60 nautical miles. That's what you've given. That's a nice little bit of jargon. Now tell us where it's actually, practically usefully applied in the real world not to invent a sphere religion which is what you've tried three times do you know how it's going to be practically used uh when you're going a certain distance to estimate your distance based you on the change in the position you don't, of measure, the you don't estimate it why are you saying estimate we're making measurements with this stuff wits it 
we don't make constant measurements in yeah, real we life, do. actually. We make a measure. No, no we, we don't. Wait, see, we you do. You want to bet make... five grand on that? You want to bet five grand on it's that? It's called celestial navigation, my friend. We're making angle do you measurements. you want to bet five grand on it? Yeah, we're, it's called celestial navigation, mate. We're definitely making we make measurements. periodic measurements. Does he need staff, to chant right? through every single time I point out how wrong he is? Can you shut up, boy? No, we make measurements, boy. You're wrong, boy. Now shut up, boy. You don't know how this is practically applied, do you? This is the show you want here, huh, Jeremy? You approve this, huh? No, I approve it. Nope, none of this do. Well, that's, that's not going to work, bro. Pushy, that's not going to work. Don't do that again, Mason. Don't do that again, Mason. Just... What? Tell him to why shut why up we... while he's belligerent and talking through me every time I correct him. Yeah, no, yeah that's how I'm talking and do boy. something like that. Yes. No, boy. That's what's disrespectful, <laughs> boy. boy. That. Man. Oh, look who's back, Stacy, the biggest disrespecter. Okay, oh well, no worries. I'll just make my conclusions. Guys, I'll make guys, my conclusions. No worries. How many days, the snowflakes how many are done, days having their little moment. Show that we don't have all this. We invite Nathan to have a show here. Hey, meanwhile, while we get further and further away from the point, and Neil makes it more and more distant, also. Have to go. Yeah. Fuck. Do yeah, I'm trying to make a conclusion. Trying to make a conclusion. In which it doesn't know what or how this will be practically applied. He's made three attempts of turning it into a sphere for some reason. That's not a practical application in the real world. Oh, uh, that's not what I said. I said to determine distance based on how far the stars drop when you travel on the Earth. How'd you do it? You just measure the angle to the star as you travel on the Earth. Then what? Then you equate it to a distance based on a relationship between the two, which, of course, in fairy tale globe land, they assume is a linear relationship. No, no, that in the how... real world. No, no, you keep trying to take this to a globe. No, none of us are trying to get back on the globe. Can you stop doing that? How do you do that? How do you get the distance with the angle? What's it? Uh, as it drops one degree. It's 60 nautical miles. It's very simple. You make a measurement angle. No, you're not measuring you it drop. So, no, no. You're not measuring it drop, Witsy. You're just measuring its position and angle and taking the time when you do it. Do you not know how this is done then? You're not measuring That's it drop. That's literally dropped. what I I'll just try and repeat myself. That... It's, it's just every single time. I mean, maybe if I say, can you stop this doing that? Like, like maybe 30 Yeah, I'm still watch, talking. Bro. He's still trying to segue. No, no, Witsy. I'm trying to get you to detail how it's practically applied. But you haven't done it yet. Yes, I have actually. No, you have not. So I pointed, I pointed out earlier that obviously we make periodic measurements, and then based on the amount of degrees that a certain star has changed, we then can get a distance. You then said, "No, we're constantly making it." I offered you a five thousand dollar bet. You got really quiet. Obviously, it's periodic. Now you're trying to point out to me that it's periodic, and you have to write the time down because then you go make a periodic measurement, compare the time, compare the the angle, and then say, "Okay, so how far we've gone." You're not in any way refuting anything I've said. This is just some weird little game you're playing. And what's it? the point of it? Actually? What's it? Nobody's watching a star dropping towards the horizon at one degree for every 16 nautical miles. That is not how this function is done. You don't know how it's done. Do you? Neither do you. Well, you, okay, first of all, you absolutely can do it that way. And do you want to place okay, a bet? Give me, that give I me a distance it? to a GP with that method. Based on your description of watching a star drop to the horizon at a rate of one degree for every 60 nautical miles. Tell me how you find your position on a map with that. Go. Whoa, notice how he moved the goalpost to finding my position and knowing the distance to ground position. Now, of course, that wasn't what I said. I said to know how long of a distance you've traveled. So that was pretty nice little sleight of hand. I guess it might work with other yeah, people, did, but not. Okay, give us, give us that then. Okay, okay, give us that then. Give us that. Give us a distance travelled based on an angle to star dropping towards the horizon. How are you going to extrapolate out a distance with that? Go ahead, give us the maths. Uh, I've said it three times. So if the, if the star is measured to be displaced a degree, then it is interpreted as a certain distance, specifically 60 nautical miles. 
if you have some profound evidence that all of the, the almanacs and all of the literature is wrong, please enlighten me. Okay, I don't, I'm not going to keep repeating it, though. And, and we will practically use that how? That was my initial question. How is this practically applied? So tell me how you'll now practically apply that information. Well, I said yeah, he, how you could practically apply it. He's in a fixed position. The star is still going to no, go away. No, don't give him any help. Let him I dig his own hole. He clearly doesn't what? know how this is done. It's obvious to well, me. Know he, knows I he's, know how... he knows he's drowning. He knows he doesn't no, know how to I... explain it. He doesn't know how to explain what? how to put this into practical application. What? He keeps telling me he's already done it and telling me he's bet me five grand. Yeah, and you didn't take it. Yeah, but he's away from the original claim. You want to take the it angle now? To the, the angle to the zenith line wouldn't change with altitude because the zenith line is a, is a vertical line, regardless what? if you are at surface level or on the top of a mountain or on an airplane. Your baseline to the zenith line, it's a 90-degree angle. Okay, what That's did a I flat say? Earth measurement. Why you you're all? not talking about celestial. I didn't navigation. hear the end you're of George's statement. Else, I'm man. sorry. Witsit was doing to him what he was doing to me. Sorry, George. I didn't get to hear that. Witsit got triggered in the middle of it and decided to chant through you. He's a straw man. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. A zenith line from the star to the GP ground position, that zenith line is a vertical line. You need to have a horizontal line meeting that vertical line at 90 degree, regardless if you're on the, on, the, on the surface of the earth or on the top of a mountain or uh, uh, even further up on an on a, on a airplane or whatever. You need to have a horizontal line meeting that zenith line at 90 degree. Yeah. But it's not changing. Yeah, it you said it was matter. receding. So, so, it's so, so, so it's it. You told us receding towards horizon at a rate comparable to miles in degree. No, no, what, what George has just explained to you in terms of what we actually do is we measure a position below it 90 degrees to your position. That's what we're actually doing. Nothing's moving towards the horizon at a rate here, wits it. Quite the contrary. Not at all. In fact, we need to know... The There's him chanting through me again when I hadn't finished my statement. Yes, you did, wits it. It's all you recorded. You want to bet five grand? Maybe if you well, turn it into a bet, maybe, 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 maybe a bit of overconfidence will make the audience think that you're really winning here. No, no Witsit, we're exposing you, Witsit. You don't know how the stars work. You don't know what they're used for, how to practically apply them. You don't know anything about them. It's obvious. You're just chanting. So I just, I just think that we're talking past each other. First, not we. Well, I who's doing that, Eli? Because really. I'm clearly well, not. Why doing you have that. to? You don't have to interrupt me, bro. I'm listening to the conversation. I waited for a chance to speak. I'm not saying that. It, look, all I'm saying is, I think you're talking past each other. You were clearly talking about the 60 nautical miles per degree. So you're talking about the position change with respect to um, uh, the horizon. Now you did just say that's not what I'm talking about, but you did say that. Um, and George and Nathan, from when I first came in, were trying to talk about how there's no change in the angle to the star the higher up you go. And you keep talking about um, 60 nautical miles per degree, which would have to do with the change in relation to your distance towards the equator. So I, I feel That's like you're talking about two different things. I know, but he's saying, okay, so how is that practically applied then? Versus what he's saying. I hear you, but... Right, but that, that's okay. So I never said that when you change altitude, your zenith's going to change. That's ridiculous, right? If I, I don't think I did, but if I said drops towards the horizon, then I misspoke because obviously, if you're traveling towards it, the star's going to come towards you. I don't think I said that, but I might have said it in relation yeah, no, to the I horizon. If I'm I said not saying it, I'm you said that. I'm not saying you said that. You guys are saying two different things. So you're responding to two different things. I'm pointing, it's not like you misspoke in saying, what you just said. I'm just saying you're talking about one thing. He's talking about another thing. So let's just try to get it on to like pick what you guys are actually talking about. It, it, uh, you could say, look, bro, I, I don't know where you're going. How about you tell me how it's practically used? That, that's also a possibility well, let me say, let me... to have like a, an amicable conversation versus this weird. I mean, I hate this shit. Yeah, but let's just, like, if anyone rewinds it and they hear me jump in, they're going to hear me be super soft-spoken and just say, I oh, don't Jesus know that I would. Oh, God, I can't I handle know. this, man. 
You can't well, yeah, handle. We trying to we trying to keep We're... it on topic. Let's just forget about. Topic. Fine, let's get it. Okay, I'll get back on topic. No I worries. Said. Okay, What's no worries. No worries. This is a flat Earth proof, right? We're talking about measuring along the base to the position below a star, and that's GP. So we can save our lives if we're lost. Now, in terms of practical application of these stars, when we measure the stars, somebody's off mute. Gary Wabenga. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, because I'm making my conclusion. <sighs> we use the Earth as a flat plane so that we can have ground positions on that plane be useful to find our position with the stars. The way it's done is you measure your angle to a star and then you minus that angle from 90 and times it by 60. That will give you the distance in nautical miles to the GP so that on a map you can draw a circle with that radial value. Now if you do that twice or potentially if you're still in the middle of the ocean and have got nothing else to give you your fix three times you can find your exact location. But the way to do it is to measure the angle to the star and mark the exact time. That's why seafarers carry a chronometer. That's why it was so critically important that they matched the time of day at port with a port-based time system. So we have a system at Greenwich where they drop a great big bell that you can watch. It's like a giant globe-shaped sphere that they drop from a bell tower that takes 60 seconds to drop. So that from the sea, you can watch it and time the exact moment that it reaches the bottom to synchronise your clock. So that when you take the angle and say mark and write down the exact time, you can look up the time in the almanac that that star that you've just measured is above. So you know the exact position above the ground where that star is. Now that angle measured at port or measured out at sea or measured in an aeroplane, or measured in a hot air balloon, is the same measurement at all elevations. This is the main point of the discussion. It doesn't change as you raise up in height. If you were in a helicopter, for the sake of argument, and the helicopter could fly this high, and it was 50,000 feet above you, that is to say, the helicopter is at your zenith. There's more somebody hot miking it right in the middle of my bloody example. The helicopter's directly above your zenith position. So you're below the helicopter on the ground, holding a sextant. And the helicopter is above you, 50,000 feet in the air, with a sextant. And you both measure the same star. You will both get the same angle measurement. Of course. So I did not, nor do I, disagree with any of that. Okay. Why the hell would ridiculous. you? So, exactly. So why are you saying it as if it's a rebuttal to me? I because, simply jumped in. Uh, well, is that rhetorical or do I get to answer? Because when I asserted it's, it's that the stars... Three words. Because when I asserted... Dude. Second attempt. When I attempted to tell you for the third time that the stars do not obey our geometry... You told me about linear relationships. You told me about, what was the other one you said? Something about their physicality. That if we knew their distance, it would not be unreasonable to assert that they would change in angle. That's what you said. They don't change in angle. And the fact that they don't change in angle, in spite of your protestations and retardation suggestions that if we knew distance, which we don't, I already covered it, then it would be reasonable to suggest that they would change in angle. No, an entire navigation principle is based on the fact that they don't wits it. That's why I'm having to go through it, because you bloody challenged it. Okay, so... Okay, so what I actually said was we wouldn't be able to make any claims of exclusivity about the fact that they defy geometry, okay? And I brought up one point, which I thought this is what flat earthers typically run from, including your entire panel, which is the whole relationship with degrees and distance. Even that, being a supposed linear relationship, is in no way a threat to flat earth. That was my point. That's a geometry thing. And then when it comes to them not changing at smaller elevations, cool, they're really far away. 
I mean, even if they're not millions of light years away, they could just be a thousand miles away. That's pretty far away. I don't know how far away they are. None of us do. Not the point. point is that we don't know. We don't know how far mm -hmm. away they are. We cannot claim to know that they defy geometry. Yeah, I can. Right? Which is just they like he said. He keeps, keeps, keeps doing it. He keeps doing it. Holy shit, that's a bite! Stop swearing, Neil. Well, hold on, hold on. No, hold on. you've just done... Yeah, uh, he hello, done, hello. Done, yeah, it's okay, I'm the one who's taking him through it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't done. He had to wait to finish. Done defying it me for the seventh time. It was a very calm, like, input to the conversation, which was intended to be fruitful and productive, which is, we don't really know what the stars are, how far away they are. We don't know what happens when you get really, really high. We don't really know. All we have is limited data based on measurements relatively close to the ground in the grand scheme of things, and they don't appear to change to any noticeable degree when we change in altitude. That's cool, but I don't know what happens if I was to go four or 500,000 feet in the air. I, I don't That's care what people assume. That's an argument for ignorance. No, no, you're making a claim of ba based on something that can't be verified. It's celestial no, navigation. Nathan, what for the eighth so time? So, so the one of well, well, no, the, don't say it for the eighth time. Let me wait. Can I look? The reason that here's the problem you responded with a red herring, what's it? Because what we do know, it's not about what we don't know. What we do know is that as high as we can go and as high as it's been recorded, we rely on the fact that from a horizontal plane of reference. The stars are going to be at the same exact angle. You don't deny that. You're like, duh, we all know that. Great. So that specifically is why Nathan is saying, well, unlike things terrestrially, uh, the stars don't behave that way. And when terrestrially, if you go high up, the angle to something terrestrially would change. That's not how the stars work. So that's, that's what he's talking about. And you're refuting what he's saying with a red herring. No, okay, but let me post something. Hold correct. on, with it real quick. With it real quick. Let me post something though, real quick. Let's say you're on the ground, you're at sea level, you're looking at the top of a mountain. It's it's miles high, right? And then you move your theodolite up a tenth of a millimeter. Are you going to notice an angle change? Does anyone know the answer to that question? It's obviously no. Yes. You yes, you'll do. Oh my god. Well, Which it says no, everyone else says yes, what the hell? Can I add something here that's the most important point? According to the globe, right, when it comes to, let's just say, Polaris, right, when you go south, when you're north of the equator, you go due south, Polaris appears to drop in the sky. When you go due north, Polaris appears to rise in the sky. And they claim it's because Earth curve is either getting in your way or getting out of your way. Now, if I'm at 45 degrees north latitude, I'll have a 45 degree angle. And the bowlers claim that it's because I have a 45 degrees being blocked by Earth curve. But if I'm in an air, if there's someone that's in an airplane six miles above me, they also get 45 degrees. So where is our core blocking their? I agree. Sorry, sorry, blocking their view. That's the most important thing. We're arguing about something of course, that we can't prove. You know what I mean, brother? That's I agree with you. I agreed with the whole argument that Nathan had laid out. I almost jumped in with the people that were being semantic because it's obviously deviation from the the horizontal baseline is just a, is is a red herring. What I said wasn't though because someone said. This made a definitive claim that the stars defy our understanding of geometry. And that is not no, something that we can no, say. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He literally he did. He said they don't obey our geometry. Yeah, they don't. Like, okay. I mean, that's a true statement. They don't. <laughs> okay, so yeah, because if they I don't. say that they defy it, yeah, yes, you because they, they don't obey it. That's a... Yeah, that's because they don't obey it. Okay, but do you understand? Does everyone agree that if something was far enough away, and the amount of distance you change in relation to it was small. Here we go. Round and round and Dude, round we go. Like, they don't do it. Wits it. Wits it. Wits it. Regardless of your red herring. Regardless of the red herring we've dealt it's with. It's not with. a red herring. Uh, do you mind? Regardless no, do of the mind, red herring we have dealt with multiple game. times. Yeah? The stars 
do not do that. Coming up with a hypothetical example where we do know the distance, and it's very far, like you've exampled about six times, is an argument from ignorance. We aren't going to a point where they do change, and every height we can go to, they don't change. So your argument's silly. Can you stop making it repeatedly, please? Dude, you literally interrupted me, and then I, and then you said, "May I?" <laughs> like Come you're on, Whitsit. delusional, dude. The angle like, is the same, with it. Nothing to do with distance. It's the I angle. The angle. I agree that on a small scale, close to the surface of the Earth, there's no detectable no, change Whitsit. that can be Why measured. Why can't you just accept the fact that you're wrong? Then you what guys is it with you? Yeah, that Neo, that Neo, you're that Neo. much right that Come you on, can't no. just say, you know what? Listen, you're no, right. Listen, no, 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 it's because no, everybody no. In my, okay, let me just appeal to SE for a second. Everyone else except that, SE for just a second. The problem, <sighs> SE, is that he's never conceding, right? He's got it wrong multiple times. He never accepts that he's got anything wrong. But he will reassert that if we know the very far distance, then it's not reasonable to say that they don't obey our geometry. He said that about nine times now. Now, that means that he's in no way acknowledging the facts that are on the table when those facts form a principle of navigation that would fall apart at the seams if what he postulates about them changing with height, because if they're very far and we know they are, we don't. This pie-in-the-sky spe speculation Wait. is getting irritating. That is why that Neil's is yammering man. through the top that of him. No, it's, not, it's, it's not a straw man, is, first yes, of all. It is. It, it, but you won't let me talk, to talk though. About, about the, just let him talk, guys, and, and, regardless a, of what you think. Why not just let well, him get well, his sentence out? And then I you can say... I jumped in before Witsit, though. I jumped in before Witsit because I, I wanted been, to jump in before Nathan. I had literally Nathan. been interrupted. But I wanted to jump in row. before Neil, even. Before Neil, even. So, okay, so I, I was just, I was just gonna... I, I, I will, I will, I will. I promise. All I wanted to point out was that it was un, an unnecessary... Um, addition that he would say um, that he would even imply a vague distance. Like there is no distance. It's just ambiguous. We're just talking about well, um, due to the 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 relative uh, short distance on the, the Earth versus the stars, like we can make this argument that um, well, they're really far away, so it could be that um, it's not going to change. It to a degree that we would see because we're not getting far enough. However, it obeys other um, geometric laws or whatever, whatever the case is. But again, that you can't justify that. That's a red herring, number one, from what Nathan was talking about. And number two, it's just uh, what I wanted to talk about before I came onto the show, which is a, a Martin Bailey fallacy in which you agree to the things that we do know or or do can describe based on what we see and we're going to argue for a premise that we can't actually uh uh prove and it's like well we there is no distance there's no reason to say well it's it, it could be so high that you wouldn't see a relative change however my argument is still the same that's just that's i mean there's fallacy on top of fallacy bro it literally is no fallacy so this was a bunch of straw Well man. done, Eli. Okay. Hold on. Acknowledge that. No. That was well no. done, Eli. And that's exactly what he's doing. And I'm tired of it. I'm not Finish saying... Sentence, guys. Please. Come on. My only point was, because we don't know the distance, we can make no definitive geometric claims. If it's within the articulated... <laughs> if it's I'm leaving this shit! You... Yeah, he's just going to repeat the textbook argument from silence, uh, argument from ignorance fallacy, because we can't travel into a sky vacuum. We can't say the sky vacuum's not real. Yeah, we can. It's an argument from ignorance fallacy we that he's used repeatedly. We can obviously make claims within an articulation of the data that we have access to, right? That's cool. That's cool. Whatever. No one's disputing that. You're making definitive claims about what the stars do or do not do, and then you're trying to flip it on me like I'm the one doing that. No, I'm I'm not claiming they do or do not obey geometry. That's because I know if they're far enough away, in theory, you wouldn't really see a detectable change in the angle as you increase to the height of a plane. Okay? And if you want to deny that, you deny basic geometry. 
And so you can agree or disagree. It was just a point. And I also tried to make it very okay, fruitful you. and productive to also, to also bring up just the fact that we see the change that point? at a certain rate. So you're just going to scattergun? No, it's called an argument really? from ignorance fallacy. Really? based on the fact that I have actually looked at what they do and understand how they work and how they've saved lives at sea, I can unequivocally declare that they don't obey our geometric principles. They don't. Now, you might say, I'm quite happy to say I don't know that whether or not they could be shown to be able to defy them or not. Yeah, well, that's because you don't know it's it. That's what I've been trying to point out this entire show, that you don't know. And I do. And I'm telling you that they don't obey our principles of geometry. It's that simple. Extrapolation fallacy. They would still obey geometric principles also, if they're super you far it away. Okay. That's a fact. What I just said is a this fact. This far away distance would gas fill it. This far away what? distance would gas fill it. Well, I don't. I, I'm not. I, Claiming what's in space or with the stars? What does that have to do with anything? Hey, AG, you claim ether. You claim the distance. What the, what you the, claim the distance. You guys don't want to debate me about so ether. So would Let's gas fill this distance? I don't know what's between us and the stars. I just answered that. But if it's a vast distance, then gas yeah. would be filling it and we'd be dead, wouldn't we? You claim the distance. Though. What? Not, what if the stars are outside of containment? Hold on, before we move on, which it does have a valid point. If you if you're looking at if you're making a theodolite measurement to the top of the mountain that's miles high, and you move your theodolite up a tenth of a of a millimeter, I don't think you'd be able to to, to detect any uh, angular change. Now, maybe you would. Maybe if the mountain was a few miles yeah. higher, you wouldn't. I'm just saying the point's valid to know that geometry doesn't doesn't apply to them is kind of right, Jeremy. You, you saying, know. I don't think you might or might not be able to... T if you raise in altitude to a mountain, there is a change. That's a fact. Yeah, but a half a, a tenth of a millimeter. Yeah, that's a change. A fraction of... Yes, a that's a change, isn't it? I know, but... Do you yes, that's a change. Yeah, would but you, you, would you be able to measure it? Yes. Would you now measure a different angle to the top of the mountain? Yes, it would change slightly. What, what, my point is, it would, uh, there's obviously some point that it would fall below your ability to measure it. Can everyone in the room just acknowledge that basic principle of Dark logic? Dark minutes, dark seconds. I mean, it's just so simple. Yeah, I don't know about the, uh, the yeah, relationship. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, could, I can easily I accept that. Table. Yeah, what well, I can accept that if you're changing in height, that you'll get a change in angle to a mountain. Yeah, I can say that that's a perfectly acceptable statement. The stars don't do that, though. No, what I said is, can we all agree that we have instruments that they measure to a specific uh, sensitivity, right? And it, if the change fell below that sensitivity, you wouldn't be able to measure a difference, even though it did technically change. So is that by your standard to, to suggest that the stars might then change? Wait, why are you not answering my question? I'm asking if the inference to your question is to suggest that the stars would ever change in angle when raising in altitude. Oh, we're not at, not inferring anything. We have to oh, go I step am. by step. Clearly. No, I am. So you're. I'm, I'm not inferring. I'm telling you a fact. So you're avoiding it in bad faith. Is what no, you're no. I'm telling you a fact that the angle not changing, the fact that the stars do not obey principles of geometry and angles when measuring things and changing in height, means that you can get the world to be perfectly flat and have an almanac that works everywhere at all altitudes because of the majesty of the heavens and the fact that they don't change in angle when raising in altitude. The very same thing I stated originally. I had then nine repetitions from you, it's of an argument from ignorance fallacy. Oh. <laughs> it's literally not. It's, it, see if anyone in the room can be honest, right? So our, our instruments have a Use certain level of sensitivity that we can measure, right? And if the change to whatever we're measuring okay. angle to is below that sensitivity, we're not going to be able to know it changed, even though technically, in actuality, it did change. I am not making any claims other than I am pushing back against your positive definitive claim. If you ca add the caveat of based on anything that we can do on the earth, as high as we can go and measure, it doesn't change. That's cool. But I to did. make this like broad. I did. No, no, I did. I, after. I jumped in to correct the other guy's statement, which was objectively wrong. Okay, well, let's get to the nitty gritty of how no, this is not. actually applied. So we're going to test Witsit's understanding of how this is practically useful. 
what we're going to do see. with these angle measurements, how we're going to transpose our knowledge of one degree for every uh, one degree giving us 60 nautical miles, how we're going to transfer that into a practical use when at sea. Why are you moving the goalposts? Because I want to know how much you understand about how useful the stars are. Because you have a very specific sky pedal, a grift with ether, and that's directly connected to the stuff in the sky. That's the stars. Now, when we're talking about the stars and the sky and ether, I want the audience to know that there are practical applications for what we can do with the stuff in the sky. Beyond peddling religious rhetoric about what we think it might be useful for in the future, free energy and such like, it does actually have practical uses. So I'm testing to see if you already know how useful it actually is by seeing if you know how to practically apply what we do with the angle measurements to those stars, how we'd use them. Um, you are moving the goalposts because you just got proven Asking wrong. if we you know or not. Move on. Just asking if you know. Well, I don't care to move on. I, I I'm asking if you know. Safe, but if you, we can move yeah, on. If you just say, I don't know how to use them. You're diverting away from the point you're supposed to be conceding. I'm not supposed to be conceding anything. I'm uh, asking you if you know how to course. use the stars or not. Uh, uh, I have a general know, knowledge of it, right? Everyone else, shut up. You, you, all, all you did was respond with two fallacies, and you're like, therefore, your claim is yeah. wrong, Nathan. When clearly, like, no, in reality, what we do know is that no matter what altitude you are, there's no change. We're only working with that bit of information, not more information that we aren't informed about. So your argument was an argument from ignorance. And you're saying, no, you have to accept that because what of this possibility the... and this other um, digression uh, using a theodolite with a mountain. Like if you changed it ever so slightly, would you be at, like just to validate your argument from ignorance fallacy is ridiculous. So then yeah. say, well, now let's not move on. <laughs> let's just. Let you no, no, we are moving ridiculous. on. Hold on, let me just deal with Eli. Eli, like we are, we are now no, moving on. We've on. Now, hello, I'm trying to talk to Eli. We are now moving Don't on, know. Eli. Now we're moving on. Now we've established that the angle's not going to change regardless of the red herring fallacy that was the argument from ignorance in respect to what mountains will do. We've firmly established, and everybody in the audience understands, that this principle used in navigation is that they do not change. They do not obey these laws that we understand when dealing with things like mountains, regardless of his protestations. Now that we understand that, and we've had to pull him through the hedge backwards so he understands it, and we can accept that fact, we're going to know... With that understanding that they're not going to change in angle, it's not retarded to say that they don't obey our laws of geometry. Yeah. Now we're going to ask him, what do we do now? What? How can we use this knowledge that we've got? How are we going to practically apply it? Let's see how much sky knowledge that's practically useful which it's got. Okay, I'm actually going to first school Eli on the argument from ignorance fallacy. That's when you make a claim that something is true or false based on a lack of evidence. I did not make a claim. I said, well, like the height, I think you, like, you, like the height, you, you like the height we don't you, have, you, like that sort of argument, that like that sort of argument from ignorance fallacy, like the height that's very far that we don't know. That doesn't sound like a textbook argument from an ignorance fallacy to you, it's it, because it absolutely, I assure you, is. I said, I uh, don't I know. Something. The distance to the stars. <laughs> you guys are getting this so funny. I didn't make a claim if anything was true or false. I actually made the point that we can't make claims like that about the stars because you guys are claiming to know that the stars do or do not obey certain laws of geometry. Which Because we do know it, you stupid man. Now shut up. Sick of hearing him going around in circles with his demeaning, derogatory voice that's insulting. Yeah? Trying to talk to me like I'm retarded with a retarded voice on. None of the moderators are going to call him out for it. Shout out to Uncle Ben for the super chat. Interrupting him, Nathan. You keep interrupting him. Interrupted him, Nathan. Are you I serious? What, while he puts on a, a uh, while he puts on a little voice. Through. Sorry, are any of you moderators yeah, going to stop him putting okay, on the little yeah, voice? Here, here, Is he being I'm deeply clever you know while he yammers through me now? Because he's yammering through Hopefully, me objecting. He's it. using a derogatory it. and demeaning and voice, and now he's rumpusing the hell out of me. Oh, I'm just on mute in the content. server. So they've just muted me in the server. So this is what we get. Wits it's going to get to use some derogatory, demeaning voice, and when he does so and I object, that's the end of what I've got to say. I get muted in the server.
Okay, Oakley, so, I was trying to moderate. Hey, Nathan, and I keep would like everything cool. Well, so this started you, out as a uh, okay. this started out as a reversal of the burden of proof. I pointed out that the stars do not obey geometry, which is not a positive claim. Now, if you want to prove that they do obey geometry, that's on you. That's a positive claim. So prove yeah, it. Yeah. I didn't I, claim I that. So something. you guys are getting desperate. Like, okay, so no, I didn't claim it. that. You're you... going to censor me again, for sure. I did not claim they do or do not obey geometry. I made that very clear probably no, 20 times. I said, I said that in order to make the claim that they do or do not, you would have to know the distance, which we specifically don't know. No, you said... Hold on, John. John, just let Brian. Hold on. Brian, go ahead. Just let Brian. I really don't get it. You obviously don't know what are you for Can we let Brian? Can we let Brian? Fix it. You said that if we could incrementally move a measuring device and the top of something not change in angle, then the same thing could happen with the stars if they're very far away. Show me that happening, what you just said, in a terrestrial uh, fashion. Because you'd have to show yeah, and not... prove that in the first place to even make the postulation you're making. What we do know no. is that they don't do that. So you'd have to show okay. the very thing that you're claiming to be a, a, a likely possibility, because that's all you've got to go on. So if you can't show that, and I know you can't, and you don't have an argument. Okay, that's incorrect. I made a very simple statement of fact, which is that our instruments that we measure angles with have a certain level of sensitivity. And if the change in angle falls below that level of sensitivity, we would not be able to which one measure has that? the change. Which that's a which fact. Are, which, that's a which fact. Instrument has that. All you, instruments which, in which the world said, yeah, have one? a sensitivity. Uh, below, a, uh, below a certain level of, uh, you said you won't be able to measure the angle. We can always me measure the, the angle as long as we can see the object. Really? Can you can you measure point zero 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 one arc second? Can you send me that device, can please? You see the object? A billion can you see the object? No, you can't. That's can you below. See the object? I think that even Hubble. I think it's zero point zero 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 five. <laughs> Is the Stupid. yeah? I mean, that's the Hubble. Who knows about Hubble? Change with your eyes. At but I'm just, point. I'm just going over the claimed angular sensitivity at maximum that we mm -hmm. currently profess to have. So no, to answer your mm -hmm. question, Stupid. yeah, there's a limit, right? But that that you can name with a decimal point means that by virtue of you asking, there is a quantitative change by the virtue of the fact that you're even asking. If there's a number difference, then it's changed. If you're saying, well, that number difference is so small that we couldn't detect it, you're like, yeah, but it's still a change in angle, regardless of how small. Or you saying, well, but because our sensitivity is not high enough, we can't detect it. What, with the stars? No, there is no detectable change ever at any altitude. This is the point that, for some reason, we're going around it. I don't know why you've got a... Yeah, well Go on, Brian. The, the Please, let me, literally my point. I, I made the initial claim. Can I, uh. I'll be quick, John. The problem is when terrestrial objects are, appear to change in their in their apparent angular height, it's due to perspective, which is to do with the eyes, the human eyes. Not the lens, not anything else. It's perspective. When the stars don't do that, it means they're not obeying perspective, which means they're not obeying human eyes which means they're not terrestrial, as we understand. It's that simple. Why are we arguing about this point? I agree with that. This seems like you guys well, should have never argued me, with my point. Can I go it's back to basic the basic oh, Here we go. Now we agree. When he gets proven wrong, know, he agrees. I've said the same so, thing the whole time. Uh, he just which it, in the you're saying, we're telling you May that I please, Neil. 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 Neil, we don't need the color commentary. Go ahead, my John. daily fallacy, by the way. Go ahead, two shot. Well, I, I would like to get in. I made the initial claim, and everybody's went to tell me I was wrong, right? Why don't we just apply these geometric principles? We're, we're talking about a triangle. Let's get the height of the star 
at 12 degrees above level. Why don't we do that if we can know the height of the star? And it does obey a geometry. Well, the problem is you're trying to, you can't do triangles and geometry when you're dealing with apparent positions. And when you look at a star, I mean, I, I would make it a, a firm claim that that's not, that's not the actual position of the star. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't deal with them with triangles. It just means that one of the sides of the triangle isn't calculable. So John's example is to say that if you've got a star and it's at 45 degrees, and you go, okay, fine, well, let's work out its height then, yeah? Because we can work out the distance using celestial navigation. So why don't we just use trig and calculate for the height? So you do the maths and you get the height. And you go, oh, well, let's just double check it three hours later. And what do you know? It's no longer at 45 degrees. Now it's at 20 degrees. Has it got the same height? Oh, well, no, and now it calculates to have a completely different height, doesn't it? What about when it's at one degree above the horizon? Is it about to smash into the ground? What about when it touches the horizon? Is the star touching the ground? Of course it isn't. We're dealing with perspective. Where the star is is representative of where it's above on the ground. And as time progresses and the star recedes towards the horizon, it's getting further and further away from your position. It's moving over a ground position that's further away. But that appears to you like it's receding towards the horizon. That's very much a function of perspective. Now, while that's very useful for us to map a always parallel to the ground position with its GP, so we can find our position knowing where stars are above at given times. Very, very useful. But it means we cannot get the height. Yeah, but perspective perspective doesn't cause things to be out of their <laughs> geometric position. Like if you're in the hold on, John. A, oh, hold on. Try again, Jeremy. Like if, if you're in the middle, like say you're standing in the middle of a railroad track, right? And you have a gun. Perspective's causing the railroad tracks to meet. But if you try to shoot at the at the rails, you're going to hit them because they're geometrically there. Like, you can do geometry and stuff with that. Like, the stars, um, you know, the stars are not getting the actual position of them. The rail's not there. It's in some you, other position. You don't want... You don't that's obey not what geometry. Thank you, Neil. Not obeying geometry. Yeah. Not obeying geometry. I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. No, geometry is a fluid mechanism. We have Euclidean, non-Euclidean, variable mm. changes. We have hyperbolic geometry. We have literally things that change from parabolic to hyperbolic to ecliptic to elliptical. So, like, you, you can do tons of things with geometry. I don't dispute that we don't know what the stars are, that we don't know how vision works when it comes to the stars. I don't dispute that it's it's baffling. I wasn't trying to fight with you guys. Maybe I shouldn't have brought my point up while you were all heated talking to a glober. That wasn't my intention. I was I simply stating, I simply was stating, I note. think that you should maybe reconsider so definitively proclaiming the stars defy geometry because maybe you mean Euclidean geometry Okay, so like we don't know. Oh, we don't know what they now. do. What a, demonstrate no, demonstrate geometry. any other geometry in the real world. Yeah, demonstrate any other yeah. geometry in the real world. Okay, no problem. Exactly. So when we have With corpuscular it, there is only and geometry. It's so it's not, not, there is no non Euclidean geometry or any of these other ones. These are mathematical, they have no relevance and relationship to our terrestrial world. There was only what? What? We're talking no about how we Euclidean see. geometry. Euclidean geometry doesn't exist. There was only geometry and non-geometry. That's it. But no, but but there in, is no in Euclidean order, geometry, order parallel order. lines don't converge. But when in we what? see things, in, they do. But that's perspective. What? The, okay, that's but perspective, perspective still is <laughs> described I mean? with geometry, right? No, but in, yeah, but so we're, just, we're, we're dealing yeah. with the measurement. Uh, the, we're, but we're, when we're dealing with an angular measurement, we're dealing with a perspective measurement more, a lot, most of the time. Maybe not all the time, but most of the time. If we're dealing with a distance yeah, between two points or a height above uh, sea level or above something, that's a, that's a, but that that's a perspective measurement. But geometry itself is based around shapes. 
all of geometry must adhere to the number nine, which means every internal angle must it must uh, add up and sum to nine. If it doesn't do that, it's not geometry. So this this claim of non-Euclidean geometry that's a load of nonsense because uh, uh, and when they say spherical geometry, that's just geometry. There's no such thing as spherical geometry. It's just geometry because the sphere is a geometric shape. Non-Euclidean geometry is a made-up thing that has no relevance in reality. And any other claim geometry that doesn't adhere to nine and is, does not have a relevance to our reality is not geometry. It's mathematics, but it's not geometry. Dude, geometry is mathematics, okay? So geometry period is yeah, a, it's that, measurements it, it, of it, shapes. Other geometries can only be described as mathematics. They can't be described as geometry. That's the point. Geometry okay, is I, mathematics, I, I, but those other ones can't be described as geometry. Can you Look, guys let, like, which it get a sentence out? Maybe you don't realize you're doing it, right? But there's three, four of you, and every time which it tries to get a word out, you guys clip them. Well, all of branch to you here, Brian, okay? I understand what you're saying, that in the real tangible world, this non-Euclidean geometry does not apply. And when it comes to actually measuring things or applying geometry to our physical measurements in the real world, Euclidean geometry is kind of like saying apparent horizon because that's all there actually is tangibly. I agree, but I don't extend that understanding to how we see things. I think that we specifically see the world different than it is based on certain circumstances, okay? I think crepuscular and anticrepuscular rays arcing over your head show that. I think many things show that. I think even just the fact that we have uh, you know, parallel railroad tracks converging show that because just saying it's perspective, that's my point, is that perspective changes it from our understanding of Euclidean geometry, okay? We, we, we don't have to open this up right now, but I, I was only making the point that like, well, let's just be a little bit more tactical because we may eventually find out that we can understand how we see things a bit better and maybe there is some okay, type of geometry. fallacy. Well, I, I'm not going to go ahead and tell you that it's already been done with high precise does robotics. Why introducing something else that does not obey geometry? Why does introducing something else that does not obey geometry, such as perspective, why is that relevant to the statement that the stars do not obey geometry? Why would you introduce well, you, something else that does not does, obey geometry as a specific does example does obey to geometry. review my position? Well, Sorry, Jeremy. I, I, I don't. I don't know if you guys know, but while John's talking, you guys just keep clipping him. Try I that again, John. Done, my bad. I'm next. Try that again, John. Right. Why would you introduce something else that does not obey geometry? Sorry, we we missed the beginning say... again because Jeremy, at the start of your sentence, clipped you. Let's just try that one more time. Introducing something else that does not obey geometry, such as perspective, still does not address the point that I made that this is not obeying our understanding of geometry. It's, yeah, we it's heard not perspective does. I thought he was done, Oakley. He took a long pause. My bad. He had one more word. What? The, the, the word was the conclusion, Jeremy, which is it's non sequitur. He just didn't get it. He didn't even on his third attempt. He didn't get to say it. He paused for five seconds. Yeah, he, he didn't pause at all. Which it? Yeah, he did. Ask which it a question? Why do you well, lie so much? Hold on, man. Hold on, Brian. Hold on. He said uh, okay. something. Can I address okay. the thing that he said, or no? Am I never going to get a chance to do that? He said perspective Sorry, doesn't adhere to geometry. He said perspective doesn't follow geometry. It does. When I just went over that with you, Oakley. When you're on the railroad tracks and you're shooting at the at the rail, they're geometrically there. What? Well, and they converge. <laughs> yeah, they converge. It doesn't. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's a defiance. Yeah, that's a def say yeah to say that they converge, Jeremy. That's a defiance of a geometric principle. The parallel lines. Like you it's a, yeah, my bad. Did I pause? Did I take a breath? No, I did not. Yes, yes. That was your own panel. Yes. I, I don't care who it is. I just want to get to the end of the yes. sodding sentence. No, no. Principles that don't obey geometry. Parallel lines converging.
Yeah, but when, okay. okay, I understand that parallel lines, lines don't converge. But however, when we look at the parallel lines that are, are do appear to be converging, they're actually there. They're, that's their actual position. Yeah, you're confusing. Knock things up. Yeah, you're confusing physicality with geometry. Because it's physically there doesn't mean that it obeys the geometric principles of all parallel lines will never converge. But that you're saying, correct. but when I look at the railway, it converges in the distance. Yeah, it's not obeying a geometric principle, then, is it? That's the point that Witsit was making. Oakley is correct. The, well, yes, I, I guess yes, I'm, yes, I'm still so. making the point. <sighs> your point being that that's completely non sequitur because we're discussing how the stars don't obey geometric principles, and Witsit's very combative about that. Now he's taken it to something else that doesn't obey geometric principles, rather than just conceding that the stars don't obey them. He's continually appealed to the future that we may find different, or that we haven't got strong enough tools to show that difference that could be there. That's all we've got so far. Non-stop red herrings. Now, it's never going to get so, Jamie, conceded by Witsit, because, nah, I do agree with you, but we just haven't got strong enough instruments to show that there could be a difference in the future with a non-stop string of fallacies that is used. Then he's gone to perspective. Well, I think now, John is saying, Dude, Jeremy, why have you had to take it? addressing me, and this is what happens. They both address me forever, and then I go to talk, I can't, and then they respond to the next person talking about me the whole time. I can't, I'm not just going to sit here and listen to you talk them, about right? me. Jesus, bro. I'm trying to be good faith. Try it out for once. You've now all changed the definition of geometry because you're God and we must obey you. So since the only real geometry is Euclidean, now you won the argument. Well, what we know is that perspective is different. How do we try to describe perspective with angles that invokes geometry, but they don't obey Euclidean geometry. So what do we do? We make some new magical version of geometry and we just call it perspective. Well, that's stupid. You're still using geometry. You're making angle measurements. You're therefore measuring shapes of some sort. It's actually optical visual space. That's a fact. So what we see is non-Euclidean geometry. If we're gonna measure angles, we're using geometry, therefore, if we are going to look at how we see the world and measure it with angles, we are using geometry. It doesn't adhere to Euclidean geometry, so I agree. It is different, which means we see the world differently than we tangibly, physically measure it. That is the point. Yep. Changing the definition and saying I'm wrong and I need to concede is so sleight of hand and bad faith, it's weird. Okay? So, like, we can agree that no, no, in your you definition in, of when geometry... You jumped into the argument, right. When you jumped into the argument... The argument was against kind of the argumentation that Jeremy was putting out, is that, no, it doesn't relate in that way. Your interruption was a complete red herring, and all of this is for no reason. Dude, he said that way after I jumped in. What are okay, you Okay, well, I'll conclude about? anyway. So, th so the principle isn't using, like, standard trig or any of the Earth-based navigational methods that we would use if we had known heights of things like lighthouses because you can still navigate using those but you use those in a terrestrial manner as opposed to a celestial manner the process for using it and measuring it is celestial navigation often confused with just straight up trig and it isn't so when people ask us to give us the height of a star when we're a not even claiming that there should be one and they, the ballers, do claim that there is a height that is then immediately violated when they try to infer centre of sphere measurements off a flat plane because then they've got infinite distances to their stars in a heliocentric model. Now, for us, it's irrelevant. We don't need the height. The process doesn't call for it, doesn't require it, and the very basis of the method, that's celestial navigation, works on the understanding that there's no elevation changes to deal with. Why? Because it doesn't matter if you're on the ground, on Everest, or at 50,000 feet in the air, the angle's always the same to the star. That's it. So you well, see, we agree. If you look we at agree, what? and this, Sorry. real fast, a cherry on top is that the globe actually assumes that we do see in Euclidean geometry, hand wave dismisses the fact that perspective is different, and then draws infinitely extended lines to infinitely far away stars, and then they just map out a made up globe based on how we see. And they claim that actually the Earth is curving 
and you need spherical tr trig and geometry there and that we see in perfectly infinite long straight lines okay so like both our, our arguments work together they both okay. refute the globe hold on a second that's not quite true right on. hold on no oh, hold on brian just let me make a small correction you're under the apprehension that they make these measurements for the globe but they don't all of the measurements start off on the equatorial plane so the first step of any of this description for a globe ever is going to start with the angle measurements off a of flat earth to describe with respect to the equatorial plane that's called the celestial sphere now the celestial sphere is just a north pole centric map of the stars over a flat plane well with all of those angles to all of those stars you can start plotting them out and deriving various values one of which can be your radial value you can plot that by taking the minimum angle minimum elevation angle measurement to polaris so at the point that it's inferred on their latitude grid to reach zero that's what they call the equator so it's not exactly a back engineering it's a prerequisite requirement that their edge of a sphere value where polaris starts to disappear must match up with the minimum flat earth angle measurement to polaris because that's how it's actually used so for every single cl uh, claim to be sphere proof ever their starting point the genesis of that claim for a globe is with the equatorial plane and the celestial sphere over it that's why when back engineering tangent point horizons or at your feet out to a gp in space at some stage they have to transpose down that angle they couldn't acquire from the surface because it's curved into the middle of the globe effectively making the globe nothing more than a glorified protractor sat on the top of a flat plane with the dome of the heavens wrapped around that so your equ the equatorial plane is your flat earth map that's what it is that's where their globe comes from so to infer that that's wrong would be to say that every single globe measurement claim and inference of orbit that comes thereafter is also wrong because that's where they came from the world's been measured flat and turned spherical from angle measurements to stars that's why i'm giving you such a hard time over this if i'm honest with it i want you to understand it implicitly because it's important it's the genesis of the globe measurements they don't come from anything spherical they come from a flat plane it's called the equatorial plane and without it you don't have a globe so we completely agree yeah. on all that okay we completely well, let me say one thing we completely agree on all that and then the, the difference here is what you guys are calling celestial geometry i think someone said right i'm just calling non-euclidean okay but we agree on the whole thing they they went out on a flat earth like they always do and then they made flat earth measurements and then they made up assumptions about how we see how we see stuff in the sky how far away they can pretend they are and they started making the no then they run no. around no they didn't they didn't they just measured the angles and got the positional data so the positional data which is what goes into the what is it called the ephemeris is that the original one adam would know better i'll probably pipe up but yeah right so you've got all of the tracked data of where these stars are above at what time so uh, tonight go outside look directly above your head and pretend as a star at your zenith well you are at that star's gp at that time so if you write down, right, it's now 8.34 p.m. And X star, whatever it is, sigma 25.74, is at my zenith. And you can note that that is its position. And you can track that indefinitely. Where is it above in 20 minutes? Where is it above in an hour? Where is it above in four hours? And you can write it all down in a nice big book. That's That's where it all starts. That's where the globe begins. Writing down. I agree relationships of stars over a flat earth that's then that goes into a book and it all develops from there like i say from those measurements you can go to um radial value so that's you you started talking about orbits well where do orbits come from well orbits come from the extrapolation of r either through al or 
with the use of the ephemeris and the flat plane, the equatorial plane, that's minimum elevation to Polaris, flat Earth angle, that gives you your R value. Then R can be inserted into um, the orbital mechanics given you by Kepler and Huygens. So then you've got uh, a scaling value with the transit of Venus because you've already got distance but no, uh, you've already got scale, but no distance. So once you insert R into Venus's value, you can scale and distance the whole thing based on the starting point of a flat Earth angle measurement to Polaris to give you a radial value to turn Earth into a sphere, to put Earth around the sun in an orbital motion and have Venus, when transiting the sun, give you a scale value for Kepler's third law of interplanetary motion. That's the full journey from flat Earth measurement to Keplerian reification of orbit. Or to put it shortly, orbit requires measurements of a flat Earth. I agree with all that. I don't, I don't think I said orbit, but I agree with all that. All I'm making the point is, like, if you go out, you take your zenith, you're going to get your azimuth, you're going to take elevation angle measurements all the way up, right? And you're going to get a dome around you. They say they took the flat Earth measurements with your little azimuthal grid, and then they said, okay, actually, we're going to put the stars infinitely far away, draw straight lines all the way out to them infinitely, and we're going to hijack these measurements and flip them into the interior radius value of a sphere, just like you explained in detail. And then they're going to turn around now in 2024 and say, look, the globe model matches the sky, ha, 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 when it was literally they hijacked perspective and the sky to make it. Yeah, The exactly. part that I'm saying is, yeah, you guys are saying like celestial geometry or something, right? And celestial, I'm saying... Let's just get I, the term right. So it's celestial navigation is the, is the name of the mathematics and the process. So it's not named geometric anything. It's celestial navigation. Well, someone said terrestrial geometry and celestial geometry, as if like what's in the sky no, no, doesn't no, no, adhere no, to no, our no, terrestrial no. geometry. Terrestrial navigation and celestial navigation. So terrestrial navigation could be the same exact process in a, a first glance, but you're not. You can use real trig if you've got a lighthouse that you're sighting and you're measuring the angle to, because you know where the lighthouse is on the map. Obviously, it's on the map. And you know how high the lighthouse is, so you can use it to triangulate your position with standard trig. But that's terrestrial-based navigation. When you're using the stars, there's one very, very specific detail, don't get triggered, that you must understand when distinguishing between the two. And that is that the height of the stars bears no influence on the angle to the measurement of the star. That is to say, you measure it in a dinghy, you get 45 degrees. Now, by coincidence, there's a helicopter above you at 50,000 feet with a sextant, and he measures the same star at the same time as you do. He also gets 45 degrees. So you can both have the same almanac. The world is treated as a perfectly flat earth in terms of navigation and mapping yeah but it's not perfectly flat there's there's, oh, there's topography that's your that's your reification fallacy but let me just say something about the the railroad tracks and, and this and that thing you just said was using straight trig on earth if you go far enough away from a building and you try to do straight trig on that you'll have the 10th floor be at your level you know your horizontal when you're like six feet above the ground or something. You yeah, can't you do can't, straight trigger. Then you that. can't then you obviously can't do it. There's only certain buildings that are going to be useful in that respect for navigation. Buildings that you know their position mm -hmm. and known height. Things like lighthouses are often used for that. Right. And with the, when, when you're talking about the terrestrial navigation one, when you talk about how much resolution loss you will have, there's a, a function. They call it the Earth curve calculator, but it's actually a resolution loss between uh, differential and planes. So uh, they can apply that to get their fix terrestrially. But it's still, like you pointed out, that's still not obeying the basic understanding of the study of shape, which is what geometry is. The point I was making earlier. Hold on, yeah, your TV's very loud, John. Can you 
It's talking, Jeremy. John, can you turn your TV down? John, can you turn your TV down? It's a little louder, whatever that was. At, at the point I was making with the railroad tracks is, however we see, whatever geometry we see in whatever, those railroad tracks, they're in their geometric position, right? Whereas so when you're looking at that lighthouse. Position. Geographic position. Something. Just, what's, I'm, what's just the I'm just saying. What's yeah. the difference? Well, it's a, 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 a the, the point on the ground um, and the angle therein versus just perspective. Yeah, and they're in their geometric position in 3D space, right? If I make a straight line they're to it, they're there. Geographic location. You're confusing the system. I just told you, you just asked me the difference, and I just just told you. What, what I was trying to explain yeah, to they're Jeremy in their spot is on the, ground. This, the, the distinction comes because. With the GP of the star, right, if you're up in the example I gave earlier in the helicopter, right, and you're using a bubble sextant to, to, to make the horizontal at 50,000 feet, well, where the star's GP is, where it meets at 90, is 90 degrees to you in the helicopter. Yeah, you with me so far? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, but you're 50,000 feet in the air. So, well, how is that useful? Well, because all horizontals are parallel with each other. Therefore, if it's 90 degrees to you in the helicopter, it's exactly the same position directly below that position on the ground. So it's 90 degrees along the ground as well. Both positions run parallel. So it doesn't matter because all horizontals run parallel. Now, to understand that principle is to defy the view that you get. As you're saying, they converge. Yeah, yeah, that's how our eyes would work. But for this principle to work, all horizontals must run parallel. And because the stars aren't changing with height, that principle can still hold true for you at 50,000 feet or at zero. They still run 90 degrees to your position and, most importantly, parallel to the ground. Therefore, if you've got topology on the ground in the way, makes no difference because it still runs 90 degrees down to the ground even if the ground is two inches above that point because you happen to be where a 50,000 foot mountain is you know what I mean but in the example so long as it works it doesn't matter if 90 degrees below the star is the top of the point of the mountain or if you measure it half an hour later and it happens to be at the bottom of a valley that's below sea level it wouldn't matter because all of the lines run parallel, making it inconsequential. But that only works because we know that the angle will not change at any height. Thanks to the majesty of how the stars behave, we can use this as a principle to navigate with. But for the fact that they don't obey how normal things behave as we raise and lower in height, this would never work. We'd have never found our way around the world. Thank God the stars do behave the way they do and defy the principles that we understand geometrically. Because if they didn't, we'd have never have found our way around. Well, they may... Can I, they, I, I don't think they up. do, personally. But Okay, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, the most important part of all this, uh, we're going around arguing about this thing, this part, this part, this thing, this thing, this thing. The most important part is this. The origins of, the, of what? The origins of the globe. That's what we're fighting against, right? The globe. The origins of the, of the globe start with flat earth elevation angle measurements to Polaris. The, it's an angle, when you're getting your latitude, it's an angle between the visible sea horizon and Polaris. The only corrections that are made are for your height of eye, which is the, the height of the observer's eye above the water underneath the boat, and any uh, celestial uh, refraction that they need to add in, right? <clears throat> so other than those two things, there's no change. In other words, nothing is changing with the, with the horizon. There's no correction for the horizon. If you're dealing with Polaris or any of the other navigation of the stars, you never change the horizon. The horizon is just the horizon, right? Now, what they claim is that the horizon is a consistently refracted position, right, in our opposition. So that's why... They're always claiming that within their paradigm that there's an adding of a seven and often greater than mostly greater than seven over six or being added in 
which is changing the position of the horizon. Because they claim, remember, that the horizon is not the geometric edge of the globe. They're claiming that their, their geometric globe edge, what they were called incorrectly, their, geomet uh, their uh, geometric horizon, is below visible sea level. Because they're telling us that when we're looking at the horizon, that that's just a refracted position, refracted off of a physical geometric globe surface. But we are getting our actual correct latitude with that visible sea horizon at sea, right? We're not changing that. We're not, we're not making any corrections for the horizon. We're literally using the visible sea horizon and, and, uh, uh, with Polaris, with a marine sextant. And the, as I said, the only thing we're changing is the only, the only corrections we're making is for a height of eye, and for, uh, which, is, which is only based off a of measurement of the height of the observer's eye uh, with the water under, underneath that boat. Right? That, and one second, Leroy, I'm not finished. Right? You're coming in at the crescendo. Right, and the the uh, any celestial refraction that needs to be dealt with. Right, that means that the horizon we're getting our correct latitude off off of has to be the actual physical surface of the Earth. That yeah. means what they're calling to, what they're calling a refracted position. Right, they're saying that what they call a refracted position, we're getting a correct latitude off of. You can't get your correct latitude off of a refracted position. It proves that the horizon is the physical, tangible surface of the Earth. It proves the Earth is not a globe. Because they can't, for them to be getting their correct latitude between the horizon and Polaris, they would have to be, they would have to know where the horizon, their own geometric horizon is, and have special corrections added into the almanac when you're dealing with Polaris. There's no special corrections. There's no change ever, no difference. The horizon we see, the visible sea horizon, is the horizon we get a correct latitude from. We don't make any corrections for that. There's no mathematical corrections for that horizon, right? Because that is the surface of the Earth. Yep, those Proving are the positions. It's not some refracted deep nonsense that they like to claim. It is the surface of a flat plane. Yep, the Go positions ahead. on the ground, that's what you're measuring with respect to, so you can use, find them useful for navigation. But with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Oh, I thought that's what he was yeah. saying. Maybe I got it wrong. Yeah, it's um, not a, it can't be actually at, there, though, because there's times where we, you're looking at the horizon, where we measure it above horizontal. But there, it can't be actually there. If it was, we would never view it above horizontal. Otherwise, what are we on, concave Earth? He, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Like you be thinking too hard, bro. You just focus on I what we do do, and not some conclusion that has nothing to do with anything that we like. I, the bottom line is, look, listen. We're not here to explain things like geometry, Euclidean non-geometry. Uh, the best thing that uh, Eric Debate ever said was, "I'm not here to talk about the shape. I'm here to expose the lie." So when Brian is talking about the latitudes being got with respect to a geometric horizon and the altitude above that, that's all the fuck he's talking about. No swearing. Nothing more, nothing less. So it's like we're just exposing the lie. We don't need all this extra stuff that has nothing to do with any of the things that we're talking about. Yeah, the most important part is... Yeah, it's so true. Cool. Flat Earth. Sorry, bro. The most important part of all this, the only part of the celestial navigation argument we ever need to make is involving Polaris and latitude. Because they can't claim that the horizon is refracted. Now, not that the refracted horizon claim means that, but I'm just saying for that particular instance, they must claim that the horizon is the physical geometric edge of their globe, which they can't do. Because that is what we are getting our correct latitude from. So if we're getting our correct latitude from that position, and that's not the physical geometric edge of their globe, yes, because it's latitude, it has to be the tangible surface of Earth. That means the Earth is flat me, and not a globe. It's that simple. Thank you. Let me clarify. Let me clarify something. When you when you walk away sixty nine miles. When you walk away 69 miles from Polaris and it gets one degree lower in your view, is that is that perspective? Yeah, I mean, you that's can describe wrong. that as perspective. 
Yes, I don't know. The 60 nautical miles per point. degree is of the co altitude angle. Say that again, I missed it. The I 60 nautical miles per degree is for the co altitude angle. I understand, but what is it caused by? Yeah, perspective. I'd have to agree. You could only, we could only describe it as perspective. That's the only way I've ever been able to However, okay. however, hold on, yes. hold on. However, if you objected and were like, I don't like you calling it that because you can't qualify that it is moving in, out, closer, further, I, I would agree immediately. I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I object that it's uh, just perspective, it's perspective, perspective, perspective because in perspective, hold on, Brian, please. I disagree that it's perspective because in perspective, when we see things perspectively, we can still draw straight lines to them if they're in their actual position, like the railroad tracks. If they're not, then the pers then it's not going to work, and you can't draw straight lines to it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but how are you going Tonight. to? Yeah, but it's just about, about describing. How, it's just about how do we describe it? We the only way to use the describe what we're, what we're experiencing is perspective, although it's not what you would call terrestrial everyday perspective. Well, we what, what are we doing? It's actually a measurement so between the. If you think about it, Dave, all it is is a measurement between the celestial body and the horizon. So it's a measurement of that angular free space. I understand so, that, but that's why I said we all agree it's know, an angle change, right? Yeah. As you move away or yeah. closer. So, so you know what's funny? The only people, like, honest, like, if we're all being honest, right? Like, when we sit here and we talk about this, we can describe what we're seeing without prescribing to what we're seeing what's really going on we have to remember that that's exactly how globers get us to argue for hours and hours to go beyond the initial point listen all we have is to work with what's right before us we don't have to work with well this is right before us but let's prescribe this other thing because this may yeah. not be working in the way that we understand like that's not important what is important is we can say about the things what we can say about the things, and it, it's in direct yes. contradiction with our enemies. Let me give a real-world example of, of, I think, what we were talking yeah. about earlier. Right, right now, I'm draw, driving down the interstate, right? The distant trees, like the ones I can see the tops of, aren't changing angles. Like, I can't hardly tell they're even getting closer or the angle's changing, but the trees close to me, like, you know, a half a mile away from me, I can drastically visually see the angle changes as I get closer to them. I hope that comes through. And they are, and they are following, like, you know, geometry. Like, yes, I agree. If you raise, something would get, would it, you'd have an angle change to the thing you're looking at in the distance. But if you're looking at Mount Everest from sea level and you stick two sheets of paper under every leg of a theodolite, like, I doubt you're going to be able to measure that. You know what I'm saying? And that was with its initial point, which I think is, Valid. They still may be able well, to hold. Well, well, no, because it's relevant. But, 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 but Brian, go ahead. There is no horizon. The problem with that is that you have to mentally visual, uh, physicalize the stars. We don't know. You see, that, that you have to start exactly. giving them a physical, uh, some kind of a, fi a tangible, a tangibility, yeah, right, not just physical. Because look, so the problem with that is you have to pre-assume stuff concerning them. Exactly. That's why There's no such thing as a horizon. I don't know where you guys are measuring to. You're measuring to where from where? Where are you measuring to for the horizon? See, Where's see, that this is, see, this is <laughs> see, this is what we're like talking about. We're not. We're what we're doing is what we're doing. We don't have to prescribe it anything more than that. Like we know that we have an angular measure from a horizontal plane that we all have to uh, implement before or we take the altitude measurement of anything, whether it's terrestrially or celestially. There's nothing to art. It's not where exactly is that that you're meant? Like, why? Because you're, you're trying, trying to do, do geometry argue, claiming that you're measuring gonna, things. My bad, bro. You took a long ass pause. Go ahead, though. I'll, I did. I'll get I after. did. I'm, I'm just saying all it's going to do is cause arguments about things that we would have to speculate thereafter and thus we'll enter a loop of argumentation that we can never agree to when what we can agree to is right in front of us. Well, my problem yeah, is we're that getting lost you're in the doing quad geometry. Quad. You're claiming that... 
you're you're doing you're doing geometry, right? You're claiming that yo, we're measuring Earth flat with this, but you're taking no, you, which you're citing, which are what's up? No, we're doing celestial navigation. Yeah, you're getting angles to things. Yeah, and that process yes. is called celestial navigation. Angles to stars. Okay. Okay, you're getting angles to things. Yes, you're doing geometry, right? Is that ge geometry? No, because angles to things could mean lighthouses, and the rules would be entirely different. Well, maybe. Definitely. I don't, whatever, whatever you're doing, this this measurement you're claiming you're making, you're making measurements to apparent, because not actual positions with the ground and with the stars. We're measuring <laughs> to known positions that are in the almanac because we've spent thousands of years documenting where stars will be at given times. So you know, in earlier I gave the example of you going out specifically at eight forty three p.m. and there's a star directly above your position. At your zenith. Well, that is. Yeah. Well, that's something that you can log and say that at this time, that's where the star is. So when you're out on your boat and you, you measure your angle to the star's ground position, that's its position on the ground. Like I exampled with me standing below a star at a given time. Well, what are you going to do when you measure the angle? That's a straight horizontal baseline to the ground position from your position that's a flat earth measurement to a ground position now when i say measured flat people seem to get in a tizzy like it's some extraordinary claim no it isn't that's how it's done but it is specifically got a name and it's called celestial navigation Yes, I know, but the measurements you're making, though, when you're sitting there with your with your sextant and you're looking at the horizon, right, and then you're looking at a star, I would I would claim that both of those are not actual positions. Like you're making measurements with not actual positions of things. So what are you saying that you won't be able to find out where you are, and the star that you're measuring isn't above that position, particular part of the ground at that particular time? It is. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, the, whatever whatever you're doing when you're looking at horizons and stars and stuff, I don't believe they're actual. You just you're just leveling your tool no. with the horizon. I mean, it's it's, no. it's hold on. Yeah, I can hear my panel about to start groaning. It, it sounds like you don't know what this process involves. Is it, Jeremy? When you say looking at the horizon and that, you're leveling your tool, but the line that you're measuring extends beyond the horizon. It's not. The horizon that's useful beyond the actual leveling of the tool because the position could be thousands of miles beyond the horizon you appreciate that right the gps yeah but you're measuring to it i, I hear i you. think jeremy's I point you. is jeremy are you for you are you saying that when you're taking the angle you're measuring between uh two um, apparent points, like the horizon is only apparent, and the celestial body is only only at an apparent height above that apparent horizon point. As in, the horizon is not something tangible, and neither is the star. We can't tangibly touch them. Is that your point? Well, the ground of the horizon is definitely tangible as far as it being in its actual geometric yeah, position. But the, line itself, that it's not the, line, the, the horizon itself is, 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 is optical, is what if you know what I mean. You're right. He's not going to tell you off or say you're wrong. No, I just try to, because I think there was just... So the, so, the question, so the question is, so you're saying what you're saying to say what, Jeremy? Like, why is it coming... Whatever this measurement is. So what, what's being said? Like, what's the purpose? Yeah, Jeremy. I'm just saying I'm not... I'm not crazy. Yeah, I'm not crazy about making measurements to not actual positions and then making some claim on them, geometric claim on them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, but Jeremy, we're talking about doing something, like like literally doing something. It's not for the sake of argument. Like, 
uh, when they try to involve three different positions to get the position of the star on a on a on a, on a, a plane. That, like, no, we're talking about, well, we're just measuring something. And then we have more data in the Almanac. And then we're using that to get our location uh, so that we can move forward. And you're saying, well, what you said before was, I'm just not crazy about this process. Why? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't but, get it either. No, no, deal with what he just said. He said that the celestials are not in their actual position. Really? How do you know that? There's a correction for refraction in Lord of Almanac. No, I'm There's not talking about fairy tale refraction. Fairy, you don't even know what it's refraction, the refraction, the refraction the is. Almanac. Jeremy. Jeremy. The damn Almanac. You said that you believe that the celestials are not in their actual position. How so? My mic working? Yeah, yeah. Just... Oh, yeah. Jeremy? The mic's working good. Answer the question on the table, guys. It's Jeremy. Check, Jeremy. Check, check. We hear you, yeah, Jeremy. We, we hear you, but, but oh, where, where, All right, my mic okay. was my mic was messed up. Yeah. Uh, because if you because if you go to a mountain, right, or you're even if you're on stand on the ground, like, and the horizon's below level, and then a star sets, it would be below your horizontal, right? Like you you, you get a star below below your horizontal line. No, but it's it's not below. It's beyond huh? your visible field of view. <laughs> Beyond, not below, beyond. Because the horizon is, doesn't, in, as far as this uh, particular uh, methodology goes, it, the, the visible horizon is not what they mean by the horizon. The horizon goes to the GP and the star. So when you, when you can't see it, it's not like it's below, it's just beyond. Huey asked me why I think the stars aren't in their actual position, and I think that a star being below your horizontal would would do it for you, no? On sequitur. Does it well, if the star is in its actual position. Well, if that star is in its actual position and it's below your horizontal, then... A Jedi mind trick by ballers telling you for seven years that the stars aren't in their actual position based on fairy tale idiot refraction. That they have no clue of what it is, right? I'm just making a point. Don't get Jedi mind tricked by people repeating stupid shit over and over again. Yeah, but Kiwi, you'd have to agree if the stars are below, you know, if you're on a mountain or something, and the stars below your horizontal, that would never it's happen. Not. you know, on flat. I know They're it's not, not below actually, my but please you show me when. Try to dig something up. Hold on. It's not literally below, Jeremy. You're making a claim. Like, why would they? You're you're making a claim that it's below. And then I know saying, it's not well, literally. Wouldn't below. wouldn't would it my wouldn't my assertion that it is below mean that what you're claiming is false? Like, well, you, you made a baseless assertion. I'm pretty sure Jeremy's saying that where we see it isn't where it actually is. I think that's Jeremy's main point. How do you know? Prove it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, you could ask Jeremy. Oh, you mean? Oh, 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 hold on. You asking me? How, uh, prove it? Like, uh, like, uh, like, you know, the stars aren't actually where they're supposed to be. I mean, wouldn't the right triangle argument be just that? I mean, if you if you can't work out the height, no. then it's obviously not where it's supposed to be. No, that doesn't have any. That's non sequitur. Geometrically, the, the it's not. Is, no, you the, could make a triangle the, to it. That's the, that's geometry. The star, the star is directly above a position on the earth which is predetermined and pre-measured but what are you talking about wait what are you talking about i just <laughs> said what i was talking about I... no but i was just thinking about what qe said so i say what you're saying again well it's non sequitur who cares don't worry about it just sit down where's jeremy i'm not no tell me to sit down <laughs> what the fuck? no swearing what don't swear saying? please nice you like nice that was incredibly rude to you. There was no need for that, Eli. No, it wasn't. It was. It was deserved. 
What? What? I don't. I don't. I, all right. I mean, I don't like the guy. So what? <laughs> Sue me. And, <laughs> who is he? Why don't you like him? Who is he? Because he's always making non sequitur arguments anyway. Like it's just like he's a digression machine. <laughs> Fair enough. This is important stuff. We've got to labor Mike. this stuff. It's got to be drilled into people and it gets through to people more con uh, easily if it's being argued about. And at the end of an argument, it's really clear who's right, who's wrong, what point's relevant, what isn't. How this all came to pass, in my opinion, is the most relevant, which is the whole thing came from measurements off a flat plane to track where these stars are going to be at what time. And that process then turned spherical. It, it didn't. It didn't. It all came from uh, flat out elevation angles to Polaris, the very thing I was trying to talk about when you just hand waved away. You're, Me? Oh, I don't have a wave. You live show. Yeah, 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 that's very good. I and mean, we measure angles. And anyway, that's the end of the live show. You didn't see the importance. Well, that's why I had to bring it up a second time. That's where it starts and ends. It all begins and ends there. We're arguing about elements within celestial navigation, about whether a star can be or can't be this thing or that thing, when it doesn't matter. The whole point of this whole argument is flat versus globe. And that ends it. That, the latitude argument ends it, because that's the beginning and end of the globe, ge the globe geometry. That's where they back engineered it from. Yeah, but Brian, I think Nate didn't lay that out for them. I don't know when you came in. No, we do. We were in agreement. He, he just he didn't get to concisely round it out right at the end. But two hours and 15 minutes into oh, the end okay, of the I live gotcha. stream, when I'm sat with the lights burning, my eyes are, oh, my eye holes open, I'm like, at some point I've got to transition to the camera, otherwise I'll go blind. <laughs> well, I want to know I want to know what was the outcome. Is Richard still holding that position? Because I got disconnected. All right, look, I can't find any any measurements of the of the stars below horizontal. You mean below okay. horizontal? I'm trying to get a guy. I, I've been trying to get a guy. About? I know what are you Seattle, talking like, about? Measuring. That's, that's I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you. Give me a second, and I'll tell you. I'm trying to find yeah measurements of the stars below horizontal. I can't find any right now. I do have okay, the moon. I see what we Jeremy's know, saying. We know that he's, the moon not saying goes... he's not saying below the horizon. He's saying below a horizontal line, like a star being below a horizontal line in a plane. But again, like find that, or I don't know. Yeah, that means that means that the stars, like I can, you can obviously know the, you know the moon does that. The moon sets if the horizon's below horizontal, then the moon is below your horizontal if the moon's setting. Obviously, so I mean, uh, I obviously the saying. moon can't be in its. The yeah, moon can't I, I be in its you. actual position either. Yeah. Okay, yeah. For the moon and the sun, you can observe these effects. Okay. With the stars, you can't. What What do I mean? Okay, so the stars, one degree above the horizon on the ground. It's also one degree above the horizon at 50,000 feet. Likewise, if it's one-tenth of one degree above the horizon, that is to say it's just kissing the horizon on the ground then it is just kissing the horizon at 30,000 feet 50,000 feet 100,000 did you follow me yeah always the same you yeah, can't that, do that's that that's why i said go get it because the the ballers and this is what i don't understand we're always arguing baller response the point is the ballers say well in a plane the stars are below horizontal and i'm just like well hey, maybe that's true i based on celestial navigation i wouldn't make that conclusion but you know what go and incite that you can't find it right now can you well the moon and the sun is easy though they're definitely below yeah, horizontal, but the, right? the stars though the stars you can't find it though can you well, you get you get uh, a different effect, you don't you? Oh, well, no, you get you get the effect that the ballers use to to assert with the sun or moon that you're seeing a second sunrise because you've gone and raised above the Earth's sphere edge horizon. But the differential calculation that the Earth curve calculator is is still a flat Earth measurement to assert that optical point of dissolution that the sun still seems to comport to, but because it's much bigger, you can see it disappearing into the distance in a different way as it moves over different GP positions further away from your location as it sets. 
but it's still doing the same thing. You can still map its trajectory on a path on a map and draw lines as a result of where it moves through its zones and where it would be above at given times. We've got all of the above information by measuring it off a of flat Earth. I hear you. I think that's the case, yeah. It is. That's how all the maps work. That's how the time element of the map works. Oh, don't think sure, it's the case, have... Jeremy. No, it's the case. We wouldn't have yeah, maps. Well... Go on, Brian. Go on, John. Go on, John. I was just going to say, we, we wouldn't have maps uh, if it wasn't for elevation angles to Palaris. We wouldn't have maps. There'd be no, like, uh, world maps, there'd be no way of con connecting things, it all starts and ends there. Everything begins and ends, and that's where the globe begins and ends there. Yep. There'd be no new continents, no new worlds, no discovering of new territories, no colonisation, no expansion of the maps and territories, nothing without an elevation angle measurement of a flat plane to Polaris to divide that grid in the first instance. That's Genesis. That's the beginning point. That's where it all starts for everything. All of our history is based on that, without exception. Can I back uh, I still have that question. Can I backtrack I, I for a second? Get the question I'm sorry. Or... If you don't want me to backtrack for a second, that's okay. Two people Go want ahead. to talk. Bacon and John. Which one? Oh, we're yeah. going to deal with Bacon again? I think it was Bacon. Yeah. Let's deal with Bacon. So, why then there's a refraction correction in the Nautical Almanac? If you guys think the stars are in the actual position, wouldn't that... <laughs> Correction not been needed, or are you I'll saying this correction doesn't baby. exist? Really, you're gonna that, you're gonna answer that by asking him what refraction is first? Well, no, I wasn't gonna go into refraction at all. So I, oh, I leave you taking it, John. Even place to go? Well, I was going to go to what the stars actually do and why they had to start claiming there was a refraction. Because celestial refraction has nothing to do with globe. The claim of celestial Maybe refraction is not globe based. Didn't we, didn't we define what refraction is first? So everyone's on the same sheet of music? Fine. Okay, I think I'll, yeah. What do you mean by refraction, Bacon? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to support Jeremy's point. Uh, refraction is just how the atmosphere affects the position of the stars. And there's no, a refraction for, uh, correction for that in the Nautical Almanac. No, that's incorrect. So... That's not what refraction is. Oh, what is it then? Well, you've, that's terrestrial refraction that you've just described. Refraction is not that. I just said the correction in the old man is not terrestrial. That that is what they call celestial. That's that is not connected to globes terrestrial. It's nothing to do with atmosphere. I'm not talking about terrestrial. You were. You said atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrestrial refraction. That's not refraction. Second time's a charm. It's also a paradox. It's celestial refraction. It's celestial I'm talking refraction. About the of celestial celestial refraction is not refraction. John, hold on. They can still. Interjecting for some reason. Yeah, yeah get, get to the point. That's the point, Bacon. Go ahead. Yeah, talking about uh, the refraction of celestial bodies. When we're talking about terrestrial refraction, we're talking about things on the ground being refracted, not the stars. Yeah, talking we're about, talking uh, about sorry, terrestrial refraction. Okay, is hold on, base. Brian. We're talking about the stars, and you're you're asking us about the refraction element, and we have asked you what you mean by refraction. And what you thought you meant by refraction was wrong, because what you thought you meant was terrestrial refraction. So we just want to iron that out first, Bacon. No, no, what, what your misapprehensions of what refraction needs to be explaining from the almanac? When you think what needs explaining is terrestrial refraction, which is globe-based and sod all to do with this refraction. I'm not talking about anything about really to the globe. They did you say atmosphere then? Yeah, yeah, stop, stop. Yeah, you were. You said atmosphere. It's very specifically globe. It's just the name of it. We're talking yeah, about that's globe air. related. Yeah, yeah, sh this is there. irritating, Bacon. You say, no, no, I wasn't talking anything globe related. And I correct you. Yes, you absolutely were. You said sphere shaped air, oxymoron, atmosphere, which is only connected to the globe. So it might be ignorance. You just don't know that you're doing it. That's exercising your religious fundamentalist zealot beliefs, 
without even realising it with the words you use. But don't sit there and tell me that you're not expressing globe faith when you use oxymoron sphere-shaped air that only relates to a globe. How dare you say you're not using anything that's using globe? Yeah, you are. Atmosphere, son. That's not refraction, though. All right, forget about the atmosphere, then. Well, I can't, because we asked you to clarify your question about atmosphere My question. in the almanac. And then when we asked you to clarify what you meant by atmosphere, uh, by refraction, you suddenly started weaseling in your bloody sphere beliefs again. It's just the way you zealots are, I guess. But we need to stop that. We need to nip it in the bud. Tell you that you've got your fundamental beliefs with your sphere-shaped airs that aren't atmospheric refraction that we're talking about here. Yeah? We're talking about refraction. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about a uh, page here in the Nautical Almanac that says refraction in the page of corrections. And if Jeremy is wrong and you guys are correct and stars are their actual position, then what is this correction for? The slowing down of the stars as they reach the horizon after about 15 degrees. So as they approach 15 Why degrees from the horizon, down? they slow down. Why? Why? I don't know. Irrelevant. Why is that called refraction? Irrelevant. I don't refraction. know. I don't know that Slush either. He's got some fair different. questions. Just let him ask them, John. What? Why do they do that? First question. I don't know. Second question. Why is it called Second refraction question. then? Why is it called Good refraction? question. I don't know. Good question. Okay, so there's just a, a denial that this is related to the path of light from the stars to us. No, there's just a description that's been ascribed this term refraction, and that description is a description of the stars slowing down after they get about 15 degrees off the horizon. That's it. But refraction is, by definition, how the path of light gets changed by the medium through its traveling. So if the, if the Omina calls it refraction correction, it's attributing that correction or how the path of light is being affected by the medium it's going through which is the air really so oh, define refraction. refraction let's see if you guys correct. are saying it's not let's see if they're correct let's see if they're correct divine refraction i just said it it's how the the path of light gets affected by the medium it's going through that's that's yep yeah, that's not refraction that's not snell's law it's not Snell's law. Snell's law is not the definition of refraction. It's how you get the yes, angle from the refraction. Yes, it is. It's the law medium. of refraction. <laughs> it describes how it uh, behaves. That's not what defines what it is. Oh, well, yes, it is. It's called Snell's law, the law of refraction. You said it's not. Now you're deflecting to the Bay definition. The point That's is being made. Sorry, sorry. sorry. What? What? Bacon, bacon. Bacon, bacon. 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 Stop, stop, stop. Everyone, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, that means stop. Hello? Can you please stop? No, please don't tell him that he's deflecting by using the definition. No, no, that's not a deflection. That's working along the Socratic method. That's defining terms of the words he's used. In this case, a word that's being used and questioned by you of refraction. Now, yeah, Snell's law. The law of refraction. That's what it is. It's not atmosphere. Not that. Is the almanac correct by calling this correction refraction then? Or you're disagreeing that this correction is related to refraction? Who cares? What? Who cares? They're not calling it refraction, though, are Whoever they? Sorry, the is it just called... Is it called refraction? Or is it called something else? A bit like terrestrial refraction isn't refraction. It's got this extra word attached to it at the beginning of it. What about in the almanac? Do they no, do that? it just that? refraction. Excuse me? It just has refraction. It doesn't say celestial refraction. It says refraction. That's how it's written in the nautical almanac. It says refraction, and it's in the page of altitude correction tables. Okay, and? But apparently you guys never saw it before. Of course I've seen it. What's the point you're making? Altitude. I, I thought I laid it down like four times already. Is it refraction? Uh, Jeremy was saying the stars are not in their actual position. You guys right. are saying they are. Your question is, is it refraction? Uh, is that your question? No, it's how you handle this contradiction between say stars are where they actually are 
And at the same time, there's a correction for reflection in the nautical almanac, where you have to correct for those angles you're taking. You don't have to it's correct for it. It's either one or should... the other. You can't no, say no, they're you... reflected and they're in the actual location at the same time. You're in a contradiction position. No, no, no. There's no juxtaposition between celestial mm. refraction and actual location. That's the juxtaposition you've just shoehorned in there. There's no inference. For actual... you... There is no inference at any stage for actual locations of stars. And this juxtaposition doesn't mean that there should be one. I'm not saying there should be one. But if it's refracted, then it's not the actual position. It, it what's refracted? Now we're getting somewhere. Position of the star. Oh, the, what? The not Angle actual the position is... Sorry, you're telling me that the not actual position that we're not acquiring is refracted. How would we know? <laughs> From how the not a common like is used... You're not answering my question. For the, the star... How would we know if it's refracted from its not actual position that we are not trying to acquire? How would we know if it's refracted? Who's saying it's refracted from the non-actual position? Yeah, exactly. It's a non sequitur. It makes, make a so sense. it makes no sense then. So it makes no sense. I had no idea what you're asking now. So you follow that calling it refractions kind of benign. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that we can describe what they do as they recede towards the horizon. They slow down a bit. That's it. Now, giving it a term, refraction, refraction, who cares? Who cares? The word has a meaning. It, to it tells you what the yeah, path what, of light is doing. What's the meaning? Uh, depending on what medium the light's going through. But if you're seeing something that's, refracted, that's not in its actual position. You're disagreeing with the that's almanac by seeing stars in the What's actual the position. Sorry, what, oh, I see where you're going. You're saying, I disagree with a term ascribed in the almanac. Does that invalidate the almanac and its flat earth proving angles that are used for the GP oh, oh, positions of the... Dirt. Oh, my bad. Still in the same sentence. Obviously detected a devastating question on the way. Does it in any way this ambiguity about refraction in the almanac, change the flat earth affirming angles that are absolutely required when using these processes for angle measurements to stars. Does it in any way invalidate that? Uh, no. I'm, I'm no, so earth's point. being Jeremy's proven flat earth. with these angles then there, Bacon. So it's just a flat earth proof then, regardless of whether or not we get into the wrangle dangle of whether or not they've ascribed the right word in refraction to the process of the stars slowing down as they reach the horizon doesn't matter it still proves the flat earth's being measured so who cares just how a non sequitur really it's a can we I'm move back Jeremy's to how the point. law of refraction has nothing Jeremy, to do with refraction i'd like to discover the mysteries there say that again yeah you said the law of refraction has nothing to do with refraction i'd like to discover some mysteries I there that. i didn't say they had nothing to do with it I said the law of yes, refraction is not the definition of what refraction is yes you did no, I didn't say they yeah. had nothing to do with it. Yeah, you did. That's not synonymous. Snell's oh, law is not God. the definition of refraction. Oh, Snell's that you, you did it again! <laughs> yep, yeah, he's not getting it. You just did it again, you said no you didn't, and then you just repeated it. Are, I didn't say they have nothing to old? do with each other, which is what you said. That's a straw man. Oh, no, what you said. You said that Snell's law doesn't have anything to do with refraction. <laughs> I didn't say that. You say it. I said oh Snell's God. law doesn't define refraction. It's not what defines refraction. Yes, You're saying God. Snell's God. law, God. Snell's law, the law of refraction doesn't define refraction. It's not the definition of refraction. That's what I mean. <laughs> you just did it again. I mean, the second law of thermodynamics, it's not like the definition of entropy or anything. <laughs> well, that's again a deflection yeah. of the point. Uh, yeah, that's regardless a Regardless of why you're defining refraction, not accounting I, for there being a correction for it in the nautical almanac and still claiming the stars in their actual position. You're holding that's a contradictory position point. if you're supporting, supporting that's the almanac. Okay, let's just give it in. Okay, okay, you don't like the term. Yeah, I don't like it either. So what? He doesn't even know what it is. He just train wrecked himself three times. Sit it down. Let me, let, let, me, let me ask him a question. Let me ask him no, a question. Why are we going to ask him another question? Because I want to see it again. 
Like he did, he did train wreck himself like three times in a row in less than sixty seconds. But <laughs> so it is is Polaris refracted then? If it's not at Zenith, then yeah. So so how do you know it's at? How do you how do you know that it's sixty uh, nautical miles per degree if if you're not under the star, you can't get its actual position. If you're under the star, then the star is at zenith, then you don't have refraction. They said if it's at zenith, uh, it's if it's not at zenith, then it or, is refracted. If it okay, is at zenith, well then, then it's right, not. Right, so by right, that logic, so you, then the I one degree for every problem. sixty nautical miles would never function because it's a principle that works as you back away from it. You're saying it's getting more and more refracted. Well, then you get a differing value for the latitude system, but you don't. Yeah, latitude That's system works. My people. bad, I haven't finished. The latitude system set in stone, it works. Yeah, they don't say you do that without correcting for refraction. Yeah. And even if you don't correct for refraction, you're still working with an error bar. The, the actual correction. statement you should make is... Just one of you go. Go on, John. Go on, John. The actual statement is celestial refraction terrestrial refraction are not real refractions or distortions applied to make observation compatible models. Exactly. That's exactly where I was going to go and it's exactly what I was have. going to say at the very start. Right? At the very start when I was the first person to respond to Bacon. They have a free assumption that the star is supposed to get to a certain point and continue its apparent drop towards the horizon at the same rate because it's supposedly going down below a physical geometric globe uh, edge, right, globe horizon. But that's not what's happening. The star slows down. It, it, it appears to slow down its apparent rate of drop as it gets close to the horizon, and it never actually touches the horizon. The stars never actually get to the horizon. They disappear off in the distance because the stars aren't going down. They're moving away, and that's the difference. The reason we see that with the sun is is we don't see the sun do it. We see what's known as the sun mirage do it. We don't see that with the stars. We only see it with the sun mirage. And there's a pre-assumption that the sun is a star and all these other things are suns. And they're all doing the same thing that we pre-assume the sun is doing. And that's where it's all coming from. It's all starts and ends with the star is not going down below the horizon like I needed to do because I believe it should be doing it. So mm. we have to call that refraction. That's where that comes from. Mm. The refraction for the stars that are not actually there where you're looking and refraction for the ground that's supposed to be geometrically somewhere but is not there because of refraction. How, how is that expressed in any math in any way? Bennett, can you mute, please? Uh, the ballers are Good. trying to get in. They're complaining. They're not getting heard. Just saying. Either way, Bennett, can Bennett, can you mute? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, give me one sec. Here, go ahead and mute me, I'm, I'm driving, sorry. I've got a question. So we got the statement that the law of refraction does not apply to refraction. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> right, go That's ahead, not whoever the said they've got a question. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> Whoever said they've got a question, go ahead. Go ahead, Jesse. Yeah. So, did you say earlier that we could measure the angle to a lighthouse and do valid trigonometry off of that? Yeah. Oh, God, here we go again. Well, well I've been doing that. There's this beautiful lighthouse. I'll drop the picture. Who cares? We point. don't and... care about trigonometry. What the hell is going on here? No, when I said yeah, I mean Can for known heights of known uh, lighthouses that are on real. maps that you can use for navigation purposes. So those are yes. sp very specific lighthouses that are documented where you've got all of that information on your bo on board with you on the ship. Right, and this is uh, just such a lighthouse. It's called oh, the New Dungeness good. Lighthouse. It's got a published location, a published height. I just put a picture of it. And I've been measuring the elevation angle to it from about almost three miles away. So you're, you live within three miles of this lighthouse? 
I don't live there, but I can drive to the bluff easily. The bluff is within three miles of this lighthouse. And is the bluff higher or lower than the lighthouse? Because you said elevation angle. That means it'd have to be lower than the lighthouse, yeah? Well, because it's a lighthouse, they, the focal plane, which is the height I, I of the know, light... I didn't ask you that. I asked you, is the, the, is the bluff that's higher or lower than Jesse, the lighthouse? Jesse, Jesse, that's nobody asked. Do you want to ask again? Because he obviously didn't hear your question, Brian. Is the, is the bluff that you're yes, going to go and take this angle from, is that higher in elevation above sea level? Uh, than the lighthouse or lower ab above sea level than the lighthouse because you said you're taking an elevation angle. What's the question? Are you Is the higher... lighthouse higher above sea level than the bluff you'll be taking the angle from? The observer I hide is 58 feet above mean sea level. And what's the height of the, uh, the focal light of, uh, height of the lighthouse? 66 feet. Right. So you're taking an elevation angle to so so that's fifty eight to sixty six seven that's eight feet at a distance of what three miles uh, three about three miles yeah right two so point what, nine, why are you doing two. this what's that is this you're for taking navigation? an elevation angle of eight feet uh, uh, from three miles away why are you doing this yeah the, 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 when I gave my example it's because you can use it. If you're lost, and that's what you've got as a as something visible, because you've got I don't know a foggy night, and you can see the lighthouse flashing, but you're lost, and you're in a storm, and you're using that to triangulate your position, because it's a known position. But you're not talking about three miles away and eight foot difference. You're talking about somebody who's on a sea that's rough, trying to find where the bloody hell they are in relation to the ground they don't want to smash into, and they need to find their exact position pretty quick, sharp, or they'll might potentially smash into rocks. You know, sort of life-saving shit. Did you want to explain what this was useful for that you were going to go through? Well, you did say that you could do valid trigonometry off of a lighthouse, right? To save your life at sea. And I asked Witsit repeatedly for practical applications and tried to get him to explain how it would be practically applied, like I've just given an example of not dying on rocks. Now, that's a practical use for this stuff, with very specific lighthouses that are named with their details on the maps for navigation purposes. Now we're saying, is this one of those lighthouses and what's it practically being done for? Do you need to find where you are on this bluff? Is, is that what you're doing? What are you doing it for? Definitely. I need to know. I need to find out where I am on this bluff. Really? <laughs> no, seriously. That sounds absurd. It's, gonna... That sounds like you're mocking me with a mocking tone that I don't like. No, no. It sounds absurd that you would need to find your position on the bloody bluff. It's probably got a name. Has the bluff got a name? Uh, not that I know of. Has the bluff... No, it's not got a name. It's not in a place. It doesn't have a location name on a map. It's not in a town. Yeah, it does. Baltard bluff. So are you saying trigonometry would not work in this case? No, I said it was useful. And I gave an example of where it was practically applied. And now I'm asking you how useful this example is. And you smirked... Because it seems like what, other than being something that's going to be a what, got you on a flat earther, it's got zero actual use, right? Well, uh, incorrect. It's extremely useful for showing that the earth is actually a globe. Right. Showing yeah. that the earth <laughs> is a globe. Yeah, let's hear it. Hold let's on. Hear it. He's going to measure an angle to it. He's going to measure an angle. Yeah. I want to hear it. No, no. I want to hear no, no. It. I want to hear He's it. already told us. Let me get it straight. For you, Jesse, you've told me how high you are on the bluff with respect to how high the lighthouse is off a horizontal plane of reference thus far. So far, for your example to move forward, I and everybody listening to this after the fact must accept that we can establish the height of the lighthouse and the height of the bluff off a plane. <laughs> okay so okay stop stop so before we move forward repeat after me answer the question repeat after me you're just going to keep interrupting him can, can you can you shut that man up i'm about to make a conclusion because i've just proven earth's flat with his example and i'd like to make the conclusion you haven't. You haven't even someone shut that man up he's ruining Relax, the conclusion guys, no moderators are shutting up leal Nobody's showing up, Leal. I'm getting further away from the flat earth proving conclusion while this white knight scumbaggery happens. 
You see, what Jesse's asked me to accept and that everyone else here accepts is that we know the height of the bluff off a of flat earth. He gave us in feet off sea level. That's level. And the height of the lighthouse off a of flat earth off sea level. They both have to have a horizontal plane of reference and we must accept that earth has been already measured flat to have these two heights in the first instance. So I want Jesse to tell me that he understands that to move forward with his example, he thinks he's going to prove a globe, he says, that we've got to accept that Earth has been measured flat for these heights first. So tell me, Jesse, you understand that we are, we're all understanding now that Earth's been measured flat for these two heights off sea level. Right, Jesse? Uh, no, I have not seen any measurements of flatness with a margin of but error. Sea level. Exactly. Sea level. Margin of error. Where did you get the elevation from? Where would you get the elevation for the two heights from? Sea level, correct? Yeah, but what's say that? Sorry, not but. Not you didn't answer me. I don't want a but. I need a yes, Nathan. I understand that the height off sea level is a prerequisite flat earth measurement i need you to not butt your way around it false. sunshine false false is there oh, another white well, knight well, i hear well, jesse if the water is curved then no no then... no 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 level it's sea level that you stated they were measured off you can't have a zero reference point for heights off a curve it's sea level my friend Sea level's not the same all around the earth. Sorry, we don't oh, need any white on. knights while this guy gets absolutely roasted for his use of a flat earth and the heights above sea level. Yeah? Those heights above well, sea see. level are heights above a level that's having no part higher or lower than the other. That's not curving, Jesse. Well, let's say for the sake of discussion that the that sea level is flat, then why am I making it is. four It's not for the feet? sake of discussion. You're not going to take this absolute stone-cold fact that level is no part higher low or lower than the other as maybe being flat or false dichotomy could be, but might also be curving. It isn't. It must be flat for you to move forward with heights off a plane. Sea level, zero point, is level, Jesse. So, no, it's not going to be maybe we could accept that it's off flat. It is with respect to a flat plane. That's what's described when you describe things and their heights off sea level. So, how do you explain the missing four feet that I measured? Sorry, there is no missing anything. We're, we've already proven Earth's flat with the heights above sea level. You measured it. Well, then... Why did I measure missing height when I did my angle and distance measurement? I don't know. Maybe you're incompetent. Meanwhile, the heights of the two positions that you started with, regardless of your incompetence in measurement and perhaps ignorance of perspective, didn't change the fact that the two heights you started with for your maths to move forward were measured off a of flat earth. They were with respect exactly. to sea level. Where's your measurements for a flat earth, Nathan Oakley? Sea level. I'll just use Jesse's. <laughs> No, I don't. I know. I'm not asking you the, how you. Excuse how you me, count White where, Knight. Where I, everybody knows that Jesse's getting a proper pasting. He doesn't need any White Knight assistance. I know everybody around him would like him to not be getting pummeled and proving a flat hey, earth with heights above sea crew. level. But maybe the non stop incessant crew. interruptions of the White Knights will continue anyway, while Jesse still has yet to concede that the heights are with respect to sea level. That's level. It's definitely not globe shaped. So to move forward in you asking me how many feet are missing, which would mean you're ignoring angular relationships because feet don't change with distance, would still require that the heights you give to ask about the feet that don't include perspective were taken from a flat earth. That's sea level, Jesse. You still haven't conceded the that, fact? you coward. Were you done, Nathan? Fourth time. Just the Jesse. fact that you can't... So it's someone else, that's Omnivore. Omnivore's now white knighting. This is the third no, white knight in I a row. Can someone with the mods please shut down no. Omnivore because we're talking to Jesse. We don't need Omnivore yeah, to interrupt this. Get the dogs out. Get them dogs out. Now, bro. Robo Noxious, this is the fifth white knight. Jesse. Yeah, we'll get the mob Noxious. Okay, let's we'll get, spank let's get that some ass here in a few here. minutes. But first, okay. we're going to take care of Jesse. Oh, Jesse! Proven hey, a Johnny. flat earth. With the freaking premise of a flat earth and then concluding a globe. 
floor is yours. Well, I posted my spreadsheet in the chat on Earth Your Awakening. Your spreadsheet so... is not answering the question. How are you getting an elevation? Off of from what? Sea level. So from a flat Earth, then, because the respect of both elevations are from zero. That's flat plane measurement of the heights. So we first have a flat Earth acceptance before we move forward with your spreadsheet. We don't need the spreadsheet, thanks, Jesse. You've already proven Earth's being treated as flat and measured flat. We don't need the spreadsheet. Thanks. You've already proven it's flat. Appreciate it. Except Thanks. Welcome to Jesus Flat Earth. It... Welcome to Flat Earth. We didn't need the spreadsheet. Sorry, you wasted your time. <clears throat> so it turns and out does you his cannot spreadsheet... actually sorry, answer the question, right? I think sorry, Omnivore, we, we are, we're still not done with him, Omnivore. I know you're all desperate white knights watching a compadre fall. It's a very, I'm... very tragic situation for you on the bull side while one of your own proofs of Flat Earth is being measured. I know you all need to defend him with your white knightery. Go ahead, Gary. Are you done? Are you done, Nathan? Yeah. No. Yeah, but I'm yeah. not. No, you're never we're done. Not done. No, we're not done. No, QE. We're not done. We're going to take the second part of his idiot retard QE's spreadsheet. Gonna wide knife it doesn't have angular size change with distance in it, does it? I'll wait till you're done. I'm fine with that. There's a see, second part. See, see, Omnivorous, or whatever you're called. When talking to Jesse, I pointed out that his feet didn't change with distance. QE's now highlighted that he hasn't addressed that either. Yeah, that yeah. So Hold those on. are both answers, but I just wanted to say one thing. But that's not you we're talking to. Can the mod shut him up? Can the mod shut him up? We're still talking to Jesse and, and he's just decided he's going to take it off the rails. <laughs> now, you, now you're just going to overtop me. Yeah, I am. Clearly not I'm going to mute thing. you if you don't so shut up. We're talking to someone to else. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Modding, modding. We got to do this. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Jesse, do you want to respond? Yes. Please go ahead. Your feet don't account for angular size changes in your spreadsheet. Feet, you said. How many feet were missing Boy, my doesn't... voice is changing. So the question on the table that you ignored, it's been highlighted by QE because it's been ignored by you, which is to say that I highlighted that in your spreadsheet, I haven't even had to look at it, you said that it was feet and how many were missing. That doesn't account for angular size change at the distance accounted for. So there's no perspective. Yes, so there's no perspective if it's a feet yes. value because that feet value doesn't change with distance okay i used the arc or the tangent of the angle times the different the distance to get the delta height is that correct or is that not the correct trigonometry off a flat plane so the two different heights with respect to sea level so is... that prove that i'm just clarifying you, you didn't with, the just, just just clarifying that the two heights were with respect to sea level therefore proving a flat earth already well i used the tangent of the angle times the distance. Is that the correct trigonometry That's for the delta the height? Or is you're, that asked. Not? you're asking a question. You're asked, did you account for angular size change with distance? That's the question you're asked. You're now asking what's the question. I used, I did. I used the formula, the tangent of the angle Ooh. times the distance so equals it doesn't the delta match height. Oak curve, then. The two can't is exist, the can't coexist formula? together. Perspective and oak curve can't coexist together. Okay, what walk. is what is the correct so only formula? One of them, that means only yeah. one of them can exist. Do you agree okay, the perspective is, exists? What is the correct you formula the then? He's asking you a yes question, no? Jeremy. He's saying, do you appreciate that you can only have one Earth curve or perspective? Do you appreciate that, yes or no? Uh, Hold on, you're not talking to Jeremy. That's Jesse. Sorry, I meant Jesse. Yeah, Jesse yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jeremy. I meant Jesse. Uh, it's it's nonsense. You it's won't even nonsense. answer the question. It's not nonsense. What is I, can, the I, can take a, I take a power to hold thing right now. Well, right look, now. Um, six, with a six uh, foot all, object. All of trigonometry says that I am okay. using Does the correct formula. If you're going to say I'm Does not using the correct shit. formula, then you need to tell me yeah. what the correct formula is. No, see, trigonometry see. saying something, idiot. Go ahead, Brian. Destroy Thank us. you, Kiwi. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, do you agree that angular size change with distance exists? Yes. But that's the end of that's the end of your claim now. Because our and, and, and perspective can't coexist together. I'll, I'll prove it to you. 
a the, six foot object, yeah. if my eyes are at the waterline, if my eyes are at the waterline on a globe, a six foot object will disappear from view at three miles away because of our curve. If my eyes are at the waterline of a flat plane, then a six foot object will disappear from view because of angular size change, right? Because it'll reach 0.02 degrees. So it won't be able to decipher it, right? Over a flat plane. Now that means that six foot object will disappear at the same distance on both a flat and a plane and on a globe with my eyes at the waterline at zero degrees, right? So if we add in perspective and our curve together, then what will happen is that six foot object will disappear at 1.8 miles away because the bottom three feet of it will disappear because of our curve and the top three feet will not be visible because of angular size change with distance. But that well, doesn't happen in reality. In reality, yeah. In reality, that six foot object disappears at three miles away. You've admitted the perspective exists. That means what you're trying to do is hijack perspective and try and call it our curve. Yet you're not accounting for us because you're not accounting for us perspective within what you're doing. I've just shown you there that, that the both can't coexist together. Only one can coexist. And it, uh, when we get down to the brass tacks of it, uh, our curve is dismissed. Because Jesse, we know, yeah. Jesse, did you hear that? The Hindenburg is in the corner blushing. <laughs> so, if we've got a well delta done, height. You're done. I think if you See, went, what Jesse's Jesse now going to do is statement. entirely ignore every word that's been said and plow on with his example like nothing has happened. Well, Guaranteed. You won't get past the basics. He said I didn't account for perspective, and so I'm saying that delta height is eight you feet. You ain't acknowledging any. Right, eight, eight feet. Eight no, feet is no, not a perspective said. size. I saying. keep telling him he's just not listening. Eight feet no, isn't, he's, he's isn't an angle. What I said. Yeah, eight feet's not an that. angle. I said. I said the two, our curve and perspective can't coexist together, and I proved it mathematically how one disqualifies the other. You yeah. even admitted that our angular size change with distance is a real is a real thing. So Try a different way, exists. Brian. We know that Brian's example. Our curve Brian, and perspective. Brian, you've you've gone Sorry. through it once. Let's just try and take him through it step by step. But you're do, stopping do you, me to finalise it. Well, you've you've gone through well, it and he's ignored it me. and just tried to plough on with his example. So I'm going to yeah, try and paraphrase. Yeah, he's trying to create a straw man. I'm trying to bring him back so our audience knows. Right, our curve and perspective can't coexist together. We went through the process. Our curve was dismissed. It's a process of, of disqualification. You admit that perspective, hey. angular size change with distance does happen, right? I've just shown you how our curve and perspective can't mathematically exist, uh, coexist together. You haven't. So when that six-foot object disappears at three miles away, it can only be perspective. It can't be our curve, because if, if our curve uh. existed with it, that object would disappear at 1.8 miles away. And you agree, yeah, where's, and where's everyone the, agrees, the, and everyone knows the that? perspective is this, that means it is Perspective is the reason why that, really that object disappears at, at, at three miles away. You want to ask where no, the No, the 1.8. Rayleigh criteria. This is a hell of a monologue. Rayleigh, hold on, Rayleigh, Rayleigh, Rayleigh criteria. You're saying 1.8 miles away with both Earth curve and perspective. With both. Yeah, because the that's bottom what three saying. feet will disappear of the object because of our curve, and the top three feet won't be observable because uh, it, its angular size will be too small. Does that account for like zoom? Like if you zoom in? No, we're just talking about. If we're talking about zoom, we're just going to extend the distance, maybe. Right? Because we're not doing for Earth other curve. things then. Nah, not we're for Earth curve. About... Not for Earth curve. Yeah. Doesn't make any difference for okay, Earth so... curve. That's the point. Okay. So there's a there's an angular resolution limit that would infer that at three miles, a six foot man is going to vanish. Because he is too small to see, or however Brian exampled it earlier. Well, I at have the a same exact scope on my theodolite, so that increases my angular resolution a lot. I can see a six foot man at three miles. So what has that got to do with anything? Right, another oh. straw man idiot fallacy. straw man hit by nothing. You admit that perspective exists, Jesse. That's the end of your argument. So anything you come up with after that is only a hijacking of perspective. Because all well, can't, can't you... coexist with perspective. The two can't coexist together. So can we or can we not do trigonometry with the angles and distances to a lighthouse at three miles with a delta height of eight feet? You can do whatever you want, but, you won't, but it won't be our curve. <laughs> so it, so it'll measure point. as a globe Earth for some reason. 
What do you mean? Yeah. It'll, sorry, <laughs> it'll, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. It'll hold on, Brian. It'll measure as a globe. Sorry, you've got straight lines between these two things. You've got a triangle, right? Yep. You got a yep. triangle. You got elevations yep. that you have to get off a of flat Earth. You got angles that you you can't have a friggin' curved adjacent. So that's another flat Earth proof. You got two flat Earth yep. proofs right there. Then you got angular size change with distance. You got three flat Earth proofs in your premise for a globe. Are you high? No. Yes. So yeah, what happens is that method that you just that you detailed like doesn't guy. actually give you the correct height. That's your problem. That's why you fail. No, Sorry. Oh, right. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. Who's it a problem for? Because I established that this has absolutely, you. I'm talking, zero real-world practical application for anybody ever. It is, to all intents and purposes, useless. And when I pointed it out to Jesse, Omni, he kind of chuckled with the absurdity you know, of how useless this garbage was. Because, oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. Obviously, me pointing out how utterly Everest useless this is re needs constant interruption from Omnivore. Now, now, I already dragged him by his short hairs, Omnivore. Useless garbage like this has no practical application. And it drew some sort of giggle from Jesse as he realised how useless this crap was. Because it has no practical application. None. So what? So, There's bad news because Jesse says we can't do it. Oh, no, our lives going to be lost at sea, Jesse. So are you conceding that... You're going to answer me. Um, our lives, our are lives possible? are going to be lost by at sea because of this eight-foot delta that can't be calculated and, according to you, calculates out to be a globe. What are the worldwide ramifications? Well, it makes the Earth a globe. That's no, it does not. Well, no, no, you've it, taken it, 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 angle it. measurements that can only be measured off a flat plane. You've used heights of two positions that are with respect to a flat plane and sea level. And you've ignored angular resolution by using feet for things that are in the distance so they don't change. So you can comport with Earth curve. So you've used three flat Earth proofs. QE just went through it. But what? Because you say we can't do it. No, no, we pointed out how you used the flat earth three times before you even got to the spreadsheet. So are you saying trigonometry does not work in this case? Or are you saying that level. it just doesn't matter because yeah. it doesn't make a difference in most people's lives? No, I'm saying you can use it when lost at sea with very specific lighthouses that you can navigate with. They're detailed on maps for that purpose. You've picked a random point on land to do navigation to find your position. And when I said, are oh, you lost on this bluff? Again, you kind of laughed because it's absurd and useless and has no ramifications or useful implications. Unlike finding your position when using a lighthouse at sea on the map because you don't want to crash into the rocks. You see, when they do that, yeah, they do use trig, but they also use a flat earth to do it. It's necessitated that way to draw on the maps to make the angle measurements, to use this process. But that will stop them smashing into rocks. It saves lives, unlike your crap example that has absolutely no real-world application whatsoever. I know exactly what Jesse is doing, and I knew at the minute I heard his voice, I know exactly what they're doing, Jesse. You're trying to hijack the prospective effect of optical drop. Even though I have shown you what that is, I've proven it to you, proven it, shown it in the real world for years. I've gone through this, I've shown what it is, and you're still, even though I made a video recently that involved one of your claims concerning the hijacking of this perspective effect, you remember perspective that you, ex you admit exists, even though with all that, you're still trying to push the same narrative. Now, that means you either have a sick belief that you can't let go of, or you're just a liar. There's just only one or the other. Yeah, it's just a lie. He's trying to work out clever, more and more deceptive and deceitful ways of wangling in his yeah. globe claim and hijacking yeah. in perspective and wangling in the flat earth that's already been measured in his examples, like heights above sea level. Yeah, just deceptive. Can I get him, bro? Yeah, what's the angle of size of eight, him, foot, eight foot or three miles away? Would be pretty small. So, and so, from the observer's eye line, hmm. it would appear like as if it has gone down below the eye line when it happens. <laughs> Just angular size, so, but change, angular size change with distance because it's only an eight foot difference between the bluff and the lighthouse. But, I know exactly what he's doing. I've, I've been, why don't we just... Well, hold on, hold on. I've been with ballers from years ago. 
They're right. doing the same thing all the time. Right. The specific, the specific, the right. specific. And one second, Eli. The specific it's... perspective effect is being hijacked continually by them. And I pulled Jesse apart on this on a video recently with with demonstrations from five six years ago, and he's still pushing the same thing. When you see something mm -hmm. appear to go down below your eye line, Jesse, because of angle or size change with distance, that doesn't mean it has actually gone down below your eye line. It's apparent, well, not actual. Well, Why not? I mean, now, now he draw, well, 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 to the because they're using now, the, now he and everybody is going to respond to the complete non sequitur fake example that has nothing to do with any any practical value. Why are you talking about Nathan's? Why am I talking? Because you're yeah, asking what, what me one are minute. Talking about? Right, just let him. I, yeah. So everything that Bacon has talked about is completely irrelevant because what do you use a, a lighthouse for? First of all, you know the known height, so you're using it not to crash into the rocks or, or to navigate along the coastline. That, that's what it's used for. What is his example useful for? Finding out whether or not this lighthouse is lower because of Earth curve or not. It's a completely non sequitur imagining from what we're actually supposed to be talking about. Who gives yeah, we're actually cares? supposed to be talking about optical drop either. That's what we're actually supposed to be talking about, what I was just talking about. So this is the thing that's being hijacked continually by these people from day one. I'm going through this with years. It's the same, exact same perspective effect that they're hijacking continually. And that's what Bacon, so, or that's, that's what the Jesse is trying to hijack here. He's dealing with so an angular size of an eight, hang on. He's dealing with the angular size of an eight foot object three miles away. And he thinks that the object has to stay the same actual size. He doesn't understand objects change when they're angular size with distance. That means they're not going to stay in their actual size. He is expecting it to stay in its actual size. It's a straw man. No, he's not. He's not. It's he not never a straw said that. man. That's the truth. That's the truth. You're all doing the same thing. You're at this for years. I started addressing this years ago, five, six, maybe seven years ago. It's the same. Uh, so is it the same is, is this Brian Rant hour? It's going what? on for years. Yeah. Go on, John. So, so Brian, would well, you be I would just like to point one -on -one out real quick. <laughs> Debate with me on Jaren's. I just want to point something out. Sorry, snatched your own wig off three Sorry. times. Yeah, we, we, we're concluding. Exactly. This is the end. What do you mean? Can you arrange for a debate? What, what are you talking about? I just had the debate. Yeah, it's you over. did. It's over. You got you got smashed. You it's used a flat Earth enough. angle measurement. You used a flat Earth baseline. You ignored perspective and you took the heights off a of flat Earth. John, well, go, also... John, 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 go ahead. Oh, no, let me, just let me address that. No, oh, Brian, oh, please, just yield to, to John on, for a please, second. Please, please John, well, please. Well, he's asking me a question. He's asking me to debate. <sighs> right? Can you just so let just John give, give the conclusion? All right, go on. Off it. I just wanted to say that the eye level that he is claiming this drop from is a horizontal. He does not believe level is horizontal. Why is he claiming that level is horizontal now? Level's always horizontal at the point of tangency. Tangency, that's a begging the from... question fallacy. You're trying to prove the globe. How do you have a yeah, tangent without a globe? And I was measuring from my point of tangency. Tangency, you're begging the question. Now you've been destroyed three times. Now you're going to introduce fallacy? What was he measuring? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, so Jesse, Brian, you, what? Jesse, Jesse, hang on. You want me to go on to, uh, on to Jaren's and debate you for two hours on a topic that you've already proven to be completely dishonest about three times? Right? Well, no bother. How am I being dishonest? I have, I have, I have a fee. To... I have a fee. Hang on, Jesse. I have a fee. Right? You, when all the ballers can get together, I have a 5,000 euro fee for that two hour debate. That's my fee for debating. It's 3,000 euros for one hour. 5,000 euros for two hours, because I'm not wasting two hours of my bloody time, right, with someone who's just a complete, either, either someone who's a complete just hearing you maniac, happy. right, complete maniac, right, or someone who's just purely dishonest. I'm not wasting two hours of my time. So if you want two hours of my time, 
So you get the ballers to get on, you get that 5,000 euros to get on. How about I, I wave on, my 50,000? How about I wave my fifty thousand dollar fee and you can wave your I ten thousand dollars? I couldn't give a bollocks about your fifty thousand. I couldn't give a bollocks. How about you shut up and sit down and you got destroyed? One second, Neil. I speak for myself. I'm interested in my time. I don't care about your time. You ask for the debate. My fee is five thousand euros. Either come up with that or fuck directly off. How about that? <laughs> so you're just in it for the money, then? So you want him? I believe it. Sorry, let me get it straight. You want him to do something for you. It's like saying, hey, hey, dude, you, you, you want to paint my house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I charge a, a grand for the whole building. Excuse me? You want paying for something I want you to do? Yet yeah, you want him to do something for you. He's got a good goddamn right to ask to be paid for it. If you can't afford him after asking him to do something for you, then piss off. Roll on, dickhead. Ooh. Kick rocks. You can't. Well, you've asked him you. for something, and you can't afford his fee. Now you found out that he costs money. You can't afford him. He makes videos calling me out. He tells me I'm wrong. He tells me he has the truth, and so it just seems. No, and you won't let him talk to me. So it's made sense that he and I would have a debate. But if he doesn't, if he's afraid of the truth, that's okay. He's, yeah, yeah. If he yeah, he exposes you, you at his leisure on his channel, and you want to debate yeah. him. So. He's got a fee for that. Well, well, tell me, Brian, then, what is the correct math? What angle should I measure at three Shut miles up. for an eight-foot delta height? You don't measure any height? angle to the, to the down, downwards from the top of anything. I don't be asking me questions. This has all been proven. Right? You finished yourself today. You snatched your own wig off when you admitted that angle of size change yep. with distance exists. Yep. The two can't, dark curve and, and perspective can't coexist together. I just showed yep. you that. So you, I, so you don't yeah, know the there angle? Is not, see, this is the thing, Jesse. I would need... You want me to debate you on a topic that you have been proven wrong on continually. And so is all the rest of the baller. But yet you want me to spend two hours of my life, right, on Jaron, someone I don't like, on his channel, right, debating you. But that's going to cost... Because I stopped debating you people uh, in, those, in that fashion at the end of... Uh, at the start of 2022. That's when I put a, a, a fee on it, because I had enough of my time being wasted. So you want to spend two, take two hours of my time away, then it's going to cost you 5,000 euros. That's the way it is. You get all the ballers together and get that money together. I don't know if you put in a, a, a dollar each or a euro each. I don't care. You get 5,000 euros together, and you got that debate on Jaron. Otherwise, don't waste your time. I'm not interested. You think Sorry? he can count that high after his performance here today, Brian? Next. All right, let's, let's not do that, though. Come on. Next, why the, why shouldn't we do yeah. that? He's just to begin compromise three times. Let's not do that. What do you want to do, Jeremy? Rub Four. his feet and him some hot chocolate. I mean, I don't want to do that. You can say compromise times if you can include the level is always horizontal and then invoking a tangent point. You could say he's been compromised four times. Yeah, Nathan, I think when they start with a flat earth, we should just shut them down right there and not waste our time. Yeah, it did. I agree with that. I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering Streams. Hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, joining as a member and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Day. What a lovely day!